beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed I want to encourage you to be ambassadors not only ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven but help your brothers and sisters and families there are many messages that have come out from here that offer guidance direction prophetic accuracy and insight to help a lot of people we made our messages free Ministries sell tapes and messages and make hundreds of millions from it. But the time for that will come. We are more interested in getting the agenda of the Spirit to the nations, as many who will be interested in hearing. Let me tell you something without missing words. We have a message. We're not just crouching for what to say. For the Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. The Spirit is speaking. Helping us to have an understanding of times and seasons. To comprehend the things of the Spirit. And we thank God because he is granting us grace to build according to pattern. We are that uncompromising remnant. Who will not defile ourselves with the meat of Babylon that has corrupted many great men. We have chosen the path of the spirit and in spite of the pain it will bring, we will endure. We are this army determined to stand until we become all that he has destined us to be. And let me tell you something, it may take a while, but as surely as the morning comes after a night, a day will come. It will take long. But I have an assurance that a time will come when the word of God will be scarce. And whoever has that word will run with it. The price you are paying now is nothing compared to the price men will pay for their ignorance. This is why God is exposing us to his truth. Never take for granted the things that God is doing. This is not a church. You have your church where you worship on Sunday. This is an agenda. This is a program. This is a prophetic agenda. This is what God is doing. Hallelujah. So I like to prepare your heart. Never take for granted. Don't just come casually. For every time he calls you to a banquet, a table has been prepared before you. Hallelujah. And if you will believe him enough to realize you are not wasting your time, 
then the time of laughter will come. The Bible says it is as soon as Zion travails. The time of traveling is painful. Every great man knows that the birth of anything valuable is painful. Some of you had to trek to come here. Some of you probably have not eaten anything. There are families, this family, this whole family, father, mother, and all the children left Kogi State this morning to come. What are they looking for? For as soon as Zion travails, she will put forth herself. I see Barista from Abuja. What you think people just come? You see, this is where what men of God don't get. We celebrate these things and just think this is a sign of increase in ministry. This is nonsense. It's my desire that this place becomes a portal where the voice of the Spirit will not be scarce. That we will not become part of the noise-making preachers talking junks who are out of alignment with the things of the Spirit. That God will put His word he said, he gave me the scroll and I did eat it. And he said, go and prophesy. Hallelujah. That every time you come here, you will hear the counsel of the spirit. Not the opinion of a man. Not the program, a doctrinal program of a sect or a religion. But that you will find God. This is why we depend so much in the Holy Spirit. It's not diabolism. We have come to realize that he's the only one who can help us fulfill this agenda. We are perpetually inadequate without him. That's why you hear us talk so much about the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people have a serious problem with that. But Jesus sent us the Spirit to make us like him. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Spirit of the Living God. He's the Holy Ghost. The scepter of the King of Kings. Yeah. He's the Holy Ghost. The seal of the age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Jesus told us, he said, and when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will bring to your remembrance all the things that I've taught you, and he will show you. He will take up the things that are of the Father and show you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you. Not common things, but great and mighty things that you know not. An apocalypse, an unveiling of that which has been hidden. The Bible tells us that there are certain mysteries that have been hidden from the church. Appointed for a kind and a type of people. And Paul begins to, text, to tell the Corinthian church, he said, eye has not seen. That means no dimension of prophetic eye before now will be able to access those archives. They are under lock and key. Have been sealed until the time appointed. The Bible says the prophets kept stretching through their prophetic eyes to look into those times, but it was not given unto them. He said, neither has any ear heard. What God has prepared for them that love him. But the Bible says these mysteries will be granted unto a generation. Not necessarily just because of our prayer lives. It is part of the prophetic mandate of the spirit for a type and a kind of generation. Hallelujah. That generation, that prophetic and apostolic generation that will step in in beauty and light there is a kind of revelation and access into deep spiritual things in other words the knowledge and the access we've had hitherto is good but it cannot sustain us in these new seasons that we're stepping into 
And so there is a need to cry unto God to say, Lord, let there be an opening of the seal so that those things that have been hidden aforetime, that the scrolls will be open and the seals will be broken so that these things that have been hidden, that even the great prophets could not access, would it be open unto a generation? But it will always take men who will defy the status quo and begin to press and say, Lord, show us. Open our eyes. Open our eyes that we may see. We're tired of recycling messages that have stopped people from moving higher. Oh Lord, that you will break that seal. And the Lord says, if you call unto me, out of that revelation for when the people of God were in captivity in Babylon Daniel understood by books that after 70 years it was the time of their liberation and exodus out of Babylon and the Bible says on the strength of that insight he began to intercede and suddenly Gabriel the archangel in service was going to bring the prophetic blueprint he said I Gabriel am come to give thee understanding because every time God sends a revelation, it is signified by an angel. Revelations 1 by 1 verse 1. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto his servant John, that he should show unto his servants, and he gave it and signified it by his angel. Every time there are angels that convey revelations and guide the safe arrival of those revelations. That's why to every church there were angels assigned. Their job is to make sure that the blueprint of the spirits that have been revealed will arrive safely. The Bible says, while Gabriel was on his way, the prince of the power of the air, the spiritual wickedness that governed the territory of Persia, attempted to stop him. And as he continued traveling, he wouldn't give up. The Bible says, Michael, the archangel, came. And that message was brought. There must be a generation. Ruth Heflin left this prophecy before she went to be with the Lord. She said there is a generation that will reveal the glory of God. It will no longer be church as usual. God is doing a new thing. I'm announcing to you. I've shared it here again and again and I've been criticized for it. The old wine has finished. There is a blowing of a new trumpet. It's not the old. It says, after two days, he will revive us. But on the third day, he will raise us up. There are many people who have gone out of sync with spiritual things. The sounds of the spirit are now strange and foreign to them. Because of all of the benefits that may come with ministry. But let me tell you, there are a people who are determined to stay. He said the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secrets. There are secrets. He will grant you access to do business in deep waters. And you will uncover things. This is what God is training you to become. Happy are you when God finds you faithful. Happy are you when God finds you uncompromising. It takes death. To bring certain dimensions of glory into the earth realm. But happy are you. Hallelujah. I want to share with you very powerfully this night. I want to show you by the spirit of God. Where the church is in the prophetic blueprint of the ages. It's important for us to know. That we are playing prophecy. We are prophecy in motion. Hallelujah. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is an unveiling. An unveiling of prophetic things. Hallelujah. Every story in the Bible. Everything that has been written has its natural meaning. But has its prophetic meaning. Everything. An adumbration of the things that God wants to do. The wedding in Cana, for instance, was a type of the old wine and the new wine that is coming to the body of Christ. 
Hallelujah. It's very important. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing I want to share with you is the current agenda of the kingdom of darkness. I have been very concerned. Please take tonight's teaching very seriously. I have been very concerned at the deafness of even those who call themselves prophets. I'm going to say some things tonight that will disturb a number of you. To the agenda of the darkness. The Bible says that we be not ignorant of the devices. The word devices there means the structure and the methodology. Do not be ignorant. In other words, your ignorance will not become good for you. Do not be ignorant. There is a plot. There is an agenda of darkness. Listen. Every generation and every dispensation has had Satan coming in to corrupt the things that God would want to do. In the Garden of Eden, the Bible says that Satan came in all subtlety, having been thrown down. There was judgment in heaven, the Bible tells us. And Lucifer, that cherub that covereth, who wanted to arise, he said, I will arise and be as the stars of God. I want to be God by myself. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. And he fell with a third of the angels. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. It was his fall and the preceding judgment that led to Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was dark and void. Formless. Let me announce to you that hell is not some mystery. I've said it again and again. Hell is right in the earth. Hallelujah. And hell is not just a location, but hell is a spirit. The Bible says death, hell, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is not demonic. The lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God. It was designed for the judgment of Satan and all who are in fraternity and partnership with him. So there is an agenda. In the days of Noah, the Bible makes us to understand that the fallen angels, because they have the ability to translate themselves, they started translating themselves and intermingling with the daughters of men in an attempt to corrupt the race. That was the agenda of Satan during that dispensation. Hallelujah. When God raised a prophet, Elijah the Tishbite, the Bible tells us that there was a very strange woman, a prophetic type of the mystery Babylon called Jezebel. Every time God has a, an agenda, Satan always has a strategy and a plot. And not knowing it can cause believers severe casualty. When Jesus began to admonish the seven churches that were spread across Asia Minor, a type of the prophetic churches, a, a type of the church age, for every church that he commended, he began to reveal to them the plots of Satan. For certain churches, he began to tell them that there were certain churches that were the churches of Satan, where Satan sat. Others, he warned them that the strategy of the devil is to make men look warm and to say, I have acquired this wealth. In every generation and every prophetic agenda of God, there is a strategy. The Bible says, do not be ignorant. And I want to share with you right now the strategy that the devil would want to use to cause the sons in light to abort the prophetic agenda that God has for us. You ready? Number one, deception. 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 Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Look at me. Deception. Is the art of bringing men into error. Are you listening to me? To bring men into error. To cause a disaligning. To bring men into error. 
there is a lot one of the things one of the biggest problems of the church and even the church in nigeria right now is the spirit of deception it's a terrible agenda by the kingdom of darkness hallelujah and the bible begins to warn us that this deception can be so great even the elect can be deceived if care is not taken there are lots of things going on in our churches and going on in various places and because many men of god are not standing close to the ark there's so much deception popular things that look nice but are, are orchestrated by the devil many doctrines that we uphold today they are the doctrines of the nicolaitans metaphysical doctrines they look nice they look great they inspire us but they are not of god how did it become like this one mentor teaching another somebody going for conference and getting it somebody sharing his testimony deception hmm. Acts chapter 4. God knew that these kinds of things will arise. And it was on account of this that he gave unto men gifts. It's a shame upon the fivefold ministry. That we do not even realize why God anointed and carved out the structure of the fivefold ministry. It's not for jamboree. Not for competition. Not to show which office is greater than which. Are you there? Halaboka sobreti alaba. Verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are not talents. Those gifts are people. Now he that has ascended, what is it but he also descended? First into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended, you see that? He descended to the lower parts of the earth. Jesus went to hell and the Bible calls it the lower part of the earth. Not the lower part outside the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 11. He gave unto some apostles. Listen please. MOG, listen carefully. He gave unto some apostle, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers. Why? For launching, answer me, for building ministries and empires, for celebrating vain accomplishments that have no corresponding effect in the spirit. The Bible says, for the perfecting, equipping, maturing, building up, structuring of the saints. That's why he gave the gifts. That they, the saints, will now do the work of the ministry to the end that we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge, epignosis, accurate knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the fullness of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And even that growth is to an end. Verse 14, read together. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Now listen, he said, by the slight of men and the crowning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deception. Deception. There is a lot of deception going on in the body of Christ. And a lot of people don't want to speak. Why? Because they don't want to, they hate the injury. Let me tell you something. If you do not want to stand the pain of ministry, go and get a job. Just go somewhere. 
we have a lot of men of God who are afraid of their ego, their reputation, and they will not alert the body when there is danger. The Bible says, not many of you should presume to be teachers because you will be judged. Hallelujah. There is a lot of deception in the body of Christ. A lot of Gospels, Colossians 2 verse 8. Can we look at that quickly? Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is strong in this place. Colossians 2 verse 8. The agenda of the devil. Are you there? One to read. It's projected. Beware lest any man spoil you. Stop. The word spoil there is let any man make you a spoil. You know when? when let any man plunder you. Cheat you. Let any man spoil you. Through what? What is, hold on, what is philosophy? What is philosophy? Nice, well-crafted, entertaining, intelligent, intellectual presentation of scripture. The Bible calls it philosophy. And what? Vain deceit. Is that in your Bible? It says, after what? The tradition of men and after fraternity with this world based on the principles and concepts that have evolved from men who brought it about without the presence of God after the redument this is what is happening in many churches after the redument of this world but not after Christ we have emulated a lot of junks and things that have no spiritual bearing. We have read all kinds of unbelievers have written entrepreneurial books on how to run a church like a business empire. And we have people who are gullible. They went for retreats but not to pray. They went to sit down and listen to doctrines of devils. And they have learned all kinds of demonic ways of manipulation and seductions. And they are deceiving the body of Christ after the regiment of the world. Are you, are you hearing me tonight? With my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun right until it's going down I will preach of the mercies of the Lord. Some of us are already being deceived right now. There are all kinds of metaphysical deceit. Please hear me. Some of us in our innocence, we have mentored men that are misleading us in the name of deceit. Praise the Lord. There are many churches right now that do all kinds of satanic and demonic things. The man of God has special members they take to the river. They do all kinds of demonic satanic things. Because they read the Bible does not mean it's of God. There are men of God that add the word of God with all kinds of satanic books. 12 books of Moses. 11 books of Moses. All kinds of metaphysical, philosophical, sociological junks. We put it together. The fact that you are compromising and seeing results does not mean it's God. There are natural principles. And men by nature are gullible. That a crowd is coming like this does not necessarily verify that we are of God. Hallelujah. Many of us like results. Anything that looks like results, we just go hook, line, and sinker. But may the Lord grant us eyes to see. May we see the handwritings on the wall and see that for many people, it is written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. 
God is saying, we have been weighing you for a long time. You have been misleading people. God has been weighing you. But Ichabod, the glory will depart from many churches. And Ezekiel was caught up in the spirit. And when Ezekiel went by the spirit to the temple, he saw the atrocities that were happening in the temple. Yet the men of God were still dressing nice, wearing suits, wearing kaftan like me, having flowers around, but they are not of God. Deceiving people and being deceived themselves. Lord, grant us ears to hear and eyes to see. There are an evolution of erroneous doctrines. Please listen to me. Some of these doctrines have been so long in the body of Christ. They are popular. We like them. You hear them on TV. People can attest to have received results from them. But I tell you the truth, they are not of God. When Moses threw his rod, Pharaoh also threw his rod. And they all became serpents. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come out of her. Come out. It was a cry to the Zion of God. Come out of her. Be not partakers of her halotry. So that you will not participate in her, in her plague. And the deception is twofold. Number one, erroneous doctrines. Popular but erroneous doctrines. Well received but erroneous doctrines. Result producing but erroneous doctrines. Number two, listen, look up please. The second, so the first dimension of the deception is a reception of doctrines that may be popular. Listen. Don't get me wrong. Some of the people who advocate these doctrines are innocent people. Genuinely called of God. Hallelujah. The second is deception to come, listen. I think this second one is even more, is worse than the first dimension of deception. Where people refuse to open up themselves to the greater light and the truth of God's word because of their ego and what it will cost them. Are you listening to me? There are men who would rather die than to begin to explore the new things they are hearing to find out whether they are wrong. There are churches and denominations that will never change. It doesn't matter even if, it's, if Jesus appears to them. They have built a reputation around their doctrines too much. It, it, they will have to die. Many people will not adjust. Rather, they will criticize any truth. That is beyond their comprehension. I, I said it during the teachings. The full, the full gospel. There are people who have mistakenly been convinced. That they are the alpha and omega. Of all the keys of revelation of the kingdom. And that the sphere of all that they know. Is all that there is in God. This is another kind of deception. The best any man can be. Is an effective member of the body. So we have men who are arrogant. I once had a man of God make a very arrogant statement that even if for any reason he has cause to read another man's book, even if he reads it, he will see a lot of things through that book that even the author did not see. I said, look at it. See that? That's what stopped the scribes from receiving the message of Jesus. Because they had known all the books, the Pentateuch. They were the doctors and philosophers of that time. They had every knowledge that they needed. So when Jesus came with a simple message, thy kingdom come, by your will being done, they rejected it because it did not appeal to them. And when they found out that the whole town 
was running in sincere hunger. Just like many people do today. They began to criticize and made it a point of duty that Jesus would die. But his death only escalated the message. And today, millions and billions of people are receiving this truth. It takes a childlike heart. One of the biggest deceptions in the church right now is the ego to accept the fact that, look, could it be that this that I've held on to, could it be wrong? Or could it be that it may not be wrong, but there is a higher light? Are you listening to me? There are truths that are not wrong. The Bible says he made many lights. Those lights gave illumination in their capacity. But then God made two great lights. Let me give you an advice. You must posture yourself consistently. Listen to me. You must posture yourself. Open up yourself and be in a position of perpetual realignment because revelation is progressive that is a sign that you are making progress in the spirit as you begin to explore the deep things of god you will begin to see clearer the bible says jesus touched his eyes and he saw men but he saw them like trees if jesus had left him he would argue that men are like trees but then he touched his eyes again and the bible says he began to see clearly Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. There has been an inaccurate interpretation of the truth of God's word. Inaccurate. And let me tell you something. When it comes to the accurate interpretation of God's word, it's not about Bible college and theological study. It's about the spirit of prophecy. Because the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit prophecy deception some of our family members today have been taught that when they leave a particular man of God their destiny goes with him have you have you had that kind of gospel where the man of God ties himself and says you are tied to the oil on my life if you leave, you will fail. It's called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It came from the pit of hell. Popular, result producing, but erroneous. This does not come from God. The reason why many men of God like it is because it's lucrative. It has a lot of financial benefits. If I can have 10 wealthy people, Tied to my oil. Men have just found ways to camp and to ease away their insecurities and frustrations. So they create gospels that try to make them feel secured by threatening people around. It came from the devil. Some of you are already doing it. Stop it tonight. You are being in deception. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God never gave man authority to usurp authority over another person. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship is not idolatry. It's to guide and instruct in righteousness. Oh, but there is a change. There is a change. I tell you there is a change. Things will not be as they have always been. There is the hand of God. Bringing judgment and bringing redemption. Because there are many people that are in this error innocently. Both men of God and people. We used to believe some of these things years ago. But as we began to explore, every time we believed it, something in our hearts told us, uh -uh, go back. And like the Bereans, we went back. And when we began to explore, we found out that there were a lot of question marks. They did a lot of filling the gap. And we said, no way. What is supposed to be in that gap? This is what the Lord has been. There are many of you, when you hear a message, it's not like you are cynical. Something in your spirit tells you, go back. 
go back. When other people are shouting, whoa, God says, uh-uh, fill in that gap before you rejoice. Filling the gap. It's deception. It's deception. It's happening fast. Fast. There are deceptive church growth principles that are taught in ministers' conferences. Deceptive diabolical occultic church growth principles there are deceptive church fundraising principles popular seemingly result producing but hear this voice tonight i'm speaking to you john said i am the voice of one they said who are you where do you belong which camp do you belong john said uh -uh, this is not an issue of camp i am just a voice One of the first assignment of the spirit of prophecy is to destroy the altars of Baal that a new one be built. Deception. The strength of the kingdom of darkness is ignorance. For as long as the body of Christ remains in ignorance, ignorance, the inaccurate understanding of scriptures. Revelation is not an opinion of man. It's an unfailing of that which has been hidden. And that happens by the spirit of God. Deception. Hallelujah. Number two. Agenda of the devil. For the church in this season is going to shock you what I'm about to say. Distractions through religious activities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Destructive religious activities. Hmm. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. The highest praise to the King. He will take all the glory. He will take all the praise. He will take all dominion. He will take all the praise. He will make it yours. Paul seeing and speaking to the Hebrew church. He said with all things have been made under the feet of Jesus. He said but we do not yet see. Although from heaven's perspective it has been so. There is still a contention in the earth realm. That's why God will use voices to make that a reality. That Christ will submit to the authority of the father. The church will submit to the authority of Christ. And by the agents of the spirit, the spirit and the bride will compel cosmos to come under the authority of the church. This is the agenda of God for the nations. So there is a plot. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is a, a shoot out from the spirit of deception. Distractions. There is no time in the church age where believers have activities. Everybody say after me, activities. There are, there, are, there are churches that are organizing programs every day. Every day. Every day. That's what they read from their books. Engage the members and they won't leave your church. So they read it. It was written by a business expert and a consultant. It looks popular, but let me tell you the truth. You can criticize me, I'm used to it, but I will tell you. These things look popular. Let me tell you where this spirit came from. Hold on. Do you realize that when the nation of Israel were in captivity in Egypt, hallelujah, when Moses came as a deliverer, 
what happened? The moment he went to Pharaoh and said, God is already making preparation to get the people out. Pharaoh said, ah, let's use a strategy. He said, give them more work. It is because they are idle that they even have the gods to begin to consider an exodus. Occupy them. And when they had the work, it was too much. They told Moses, they said, forget about this issue of exodus now. Because now they are making us look for straw. Every time Satan sees a people waiting. Do you know how many times the Bible talks about the benefit of waiting? I bring you the counsel of the spirit. There is too much distraction. Activities everywhere. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying everybody who is involved in this is false. You get my point? I'm just trying to plot out to you. We think the impact is in the motions. But the Bible says it is they that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. There are many men of God right now who are under pressure pressure to do any and everything just finding activities because they believe that once there is motion who taught us facebook twitter the more you create activities the more people come to your side it is that business strategy we brought to the church because we think the church is facebook so we think when we keep engaging the people It will show that we are increasing. The average believer has no knowledge of the truth of God's word that he can use to stand alone. That's why we depend on pastors. People, I'm not saying spiritual authorities and ministers. No, we are not. We have a place in the body of Christ. But where you become so dependent, as though if you leave the person, you will die, you are already on the road to deception. And men of God pride themselves, how many sons and daughters, you know, when people come to me and talk about submission, I feel like running away because I cannot understand what they are saying. Aaron, my son, ah, me. When you visit the secret place, you will be ashamed of taking some titles. It will take God to force you and say, just for organization. Yet, this is the pride of people. They fight it. Some men have the effrontery to say, this is my earthly father, but he's my spiritual son. Shame on both the man and his revelation. It's a sign of immaturity. We think it is great pride because they clap for you after the statement. Talk is cheap. distraction religious activities where christ is not the focus can i tell you the truth look at me i'm going to tell you a truth you may not hear in many places over 70 percent of the weekly religious activities that are happening in many of the christian circles are only aimed at increasing the ministry and getting the job going Christ is less, if at all, a focus in most of these programs. Forget about what we men of God do on stage. We can kneel down and cry, and ushers will bring this here and will clean muk. Imagine holding. I'm just trying to show you all the benefits. If you gather 100,000 people, non-stop for 100 days do you know how much you will raise is it lucrative or not not to talk of those who will sow into your life by being blessed now i'm not saying every gathering is wrong but i'm telling you many of these gatherings are just a a they don't teach you i'm telling you this they don't share it in congregations. Go, you don't have the opportunity to go for a minister's conference. They will look at you and say, are you a minister? Go out. I am telling you. And people discuss it boldly.
but let there be a generation that will not adulterate itself with corruption and error many of you will be the only voices some communities will have to hear the bible says there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect will you allow your voice to be corrupted there is a way of getting all of these things look at me while i was preparing to come i was taking my bath and the holy spirit was speaking to me and i was angry in my spirit about the ways people raise money in church and then the lord told me something he said listen listen i don't know of any church in the world i don't know of any auditorium in the world that can sit two million people comfortably I don't know of any the largest gathering in the world that has happened is six million people within a span of three days only three days they could not manage them but moses worked with more than three million people for a long time how did he cater for their need what system was used there is no auditorium i know on earth church auditorium that is as expensive as the temple of solomon how did they do it were the people so wealthy like that or was there a spiritual principle we're missing out they had enough i don't know one church that has stopped members and said this is enough except it's just emotional frivolities by the pastor you say oh it's enough don't bring more money but david meant it he was he had enough to start building the temple what are we missing church of the lord jesus christ distraction there are many of you it is when you started getting unnecessarily distracted that your spiritual life started dying are you following me now you started with god you started celebrating ministrations every day this is how busy my itinerary is in the morning i'm here i don't have time for you i have one in the evening then tomorrow and you started calling it ministry expansion because at the end of it there is an envelope you calculate everything that's somebody's salary your money in a week is somebody's salary and he said lord thank you you spoke to me that the oil of my life will speak be careful because you will not know when you will fall the bible says let he that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall this is what has killed men of God. Many men of God started on fire, but they became administration, administrators. I try as much as possible, and we try in this ministry to do less of administration. God gave us wisdom to create robust administrative structures so that we can focus on the ministry of the word and prayer. Because let me tell you, some of you are already receiving all kinds of invitations. You think that a door is opening means it's God that opened it. Be careful. I pray on every ministration before I honor it. I don't care who is bringing it. You ask the protocol department and they will tell you. Because I do not want to be found doing what God has not sent me to do. When he sends you, he will defend you. When you send yourself, you will defend yourself. Hallelujah. These are unpopular parts. But choose whether to be a celebrity in the eyes of men or to be a voice that men can listen whenever they want to hear the counsel of God. I choose the latter. That I will be a voice. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Look at me. Many of you may need to make resolutions this night. Look at me, please. Listen. I want you, as you go back this night, go and edit the things you do with your 24 hours and see how much Satan has choked you with activities that have no eternal relevance. I am telling you the truth. Is that true? Just take out time and in all sincerity through the lens of truth and of the word of God, edit your 24 hours and see how many things you do within your 24 hours that actually leads you towards purpose and has an eternal relevance. You will understand that this is a, this is a strategy from Satan to distract us. I've taken out time to edit my life. Especially 
in this phase of our lives, look at me. There are some things that are not necessarily evil, but they are weights at this level of life. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, Hebrews 12 verse 1, it says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. They are not necessarily sins, but they are weights. Lamentations 3.27, it says, It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Some of you may never be great in life because you are not ready to take the burden now. The strength, the glory of young people is in their strength. Pay the price. Now you have the energy to fast. Some of our parents cannot endure that again. But now you have strength. So take advantage of the strength you have right now. Your mind is still alive and active. Explore. Pay the price. I won't deceive you. You will cry. It will cost you something. But when weeping is done, you will rejoice forever. Let's hurry up. The third plot, Satan, is fraternity with Babylon. Friendship. Friendship with Babylon. The Bible says, love not the world. The word love there is do not develop a lust, a craving. Love not the world or the things that are in this world. The word world there is the word system. Are you listening to me? Some people have religiously said, Aha, uh -huh, why are you driving a nice car? Why are you doing this? Why are we buying this? We are wasting money. Please, this is not what the Bible is talking about. This is another religion. It is in category one. You know, the deception thing. No. God is not against your looking good. Lazarus with all his poverty is in heaven. Abraham with his wealth is in heaven. It's not because they were rich or poor that they missed heaven or didn't get there. You can have a productive life on earth and have eternal relevance. I choose that option. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? But it says love not the world or the things that are in this world. It says whoever loves the world Period. Without argument, the love of the Father is not in him. Loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, pride of life. Some of us have a craving for vanities. When God wants you to sit down and study, you say, ah, there's one car exhibition they are doing somewhere. It's not wrong, but compared to the priority you have, this is vanity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who can be in church like this, and the word of God is coming with this kind of fire that the word of God is coming. Check what they are doing. They are trying to respond to their friend, as if the friend is dying. It can't wait. Were you dead before Facebook or, or all of the, the social media? See, some of you cannot even off your phone to pray. It will be as if pain is choking you. Five minutes, just, well, you just run and say, let me check. If nobody has checked, you will send something. You are waiting for who will respond. This is, this is fraternity with Babylon. That's where some of you learned ungodly attitudes they wrote poems and jokes that are satanic and anti-progress anti-greatness you saw it read it absorbed it and you are using it see how your life started nose diving many people got into satanic relationships men of god online now, I know that these things have been used very well. There, is, there are demonic sites that men of God have gone to. Demonic sites. All searching for solutions. Huh? Zodiac. Huh? Zodiac sites. You know them. You are pretending as if you don't know them. All of these sites. Click and see who your life partner is. Or click and see how long you have to live. They say you are dying next week. They say, I'm coming for Koinonia. <laughs> Who asked you to go and click it? 
you put your date of birth, everything, the name of your intending spouse, he brought out your life. He said, you have suffering and death afterwards. You just say, I want to see you. Some things have been going on in my life. What is it? You carried your hands and you went and tied yourself. Fraternity. Longer throat has taken some people. They've gone to places where they shouldn't go. Said yes to things and people they should not say yes to. He who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. I refuse. I refuse to fraternize with Babylon. Not her methods, not her way of life. Because the Bible says, Babylon the great is falling. He said, her and all the kings of the earth that have benefited in her merchandise. He said, this great harlot, Babylon, in one hour, her glory has been turned to shame. It will be sudden. And the Bible tells us, come out of her. Come out of her. God is speaking to somebody tonight. Come out of her. Go and re-edit your life. Re-edit your life. There are some of you ladies here. You can have 10 to 20 boyfriends. From the film you watch, they said that's how to be a correct girl. Rich, poor, average, in case anyone that works. You hear a message like this now and think we're just sweating and talking nonsense and you'll be hardened. And if they ask, they say, what kind of man do you want to marry? He said, I want him to be serious with God. He must be a disciplined man. Is it a fair combination? Look at the way your life is. Everybody say after me, I will stand out. I hope as you are laughing, the Lord is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Deception. Distraction. Fraternity with Babylon. Let me tell you the agenda of God now. We cannot just talk about the things that the devil is doing. What is God doing? The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. The spirit and the bride say come. Let me tell you what is happening in the body of Christ right now. Look at me. The Bible says before the day of the Lord, please listen. It tells us that something is going to happen. What will happen? He said Elijah shall come again before the day of the Lord. Why will Elijah come? What does Elijah represent? The transfiguration of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was transfigured, two people stood by his left and right. Is that correct? One was Elijah. The other was Moses representing the law and the prophet. Notice that all the people that represent major spiritual truths that should not be aborted, though they died, but their body did not touch this earth. Because their, their representation is an adumbration. Are you listening to me? If Moses' body dies and is buried in the earth, and this is, I'm going to say something that will create a lot of controversy right now. Moses represents the law. This is a very shocking thing. It's against what has been preached. But did you notice that against our popular messages, Moses, his body is not in the earth. Elijah represents the prophet. The prophetic has not finished. So Elijah did not touch the earth. I won't say more than that. Sila, let he that has an ear Hear what the Spirit say to the churches. Popular but wrong. Let's continue. 
The Bible says Elijah will come, Malachi. It says, before the great day of the Lord. Listen, every time Jesus is about to appear, whether Jesus as a person or his prophetic agenda, Elijah always foreruns him. Are you following me now? Before Elijah came in the New Testament, before Jesus came, what happened? John the Baptist came where? In the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of prophecy. And the Bible says before Jesus will come again, there will be a manifestation of Elijah. So don't be surprised if you see a manifestation of prophets. But let me tell you where the problem is wrong. Elijah is not manifesting as a miracle worker. Elijah is manifesting to bring accurate knowledge of the understanding of the truth. To prepare the church for the coming of Christ. Are you getting that? If you understand this, you can test prophecy at once. Because see, the clearest proof that a man is a prophet is not miracles and all of this. The clearest proof is that you can bring to us an accurate understanding of scripture. This is what tells us that you are in connection with the throne room. He said by their fruits. Their fruit is not character. Character can be deceptive. Their fruit is their message. Right now, many people believe if your pastor is a prophet, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not against. I have people that are prophets. I know they are of God. We, we, we have times dedicated. We live in the miraculous here. But I'm telling you, listen to me. The primary function of prophets in this day is not to check how much you have in your account and say, promise, stand up. 331 302 879 110. That's my account number. <laughs> you see that? And you say, Jesus. Now, that's the manifestation of the gift. But if that is all we think prophecy is about, that's not the true portrait of the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah first comes, the first assignment is to correct errors by the accurate understanding. This is what we call epignosis. Epignosis is not just a Greek terminology to write books and sell. Uh -uh. Epignosis means the accurate understanding of truth. And this one is by revelation. There is no school that will teach it. The spirit of God will overshadow a man and bet something. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest will overshadow you. There are men who God is overshadowing right now. God is mantling, closing them like a coven and birthing dangerous dimensions of spiritual truth. That's the spirit of Elijah. When I talk of the spirit of prophecy, I'm not necessarily talking of the office of a prophet alone. Correcting a lot of things. But when the son of man comes, will he find faith? Will he find men who will be able to align and adjust to the corrections of the truth? Are you receiving something? when listen to me listen to me before the rebuilding of Zion there will first be a breaking down a tearing down are you listening to me then there will be a reconstruction of the house of God not by the patterns of men hallelujah are you listening to me the sacrifice of Cain and Abel is a type of the old and the new church it's a prophetic adumbration what happened because Cain is the elder brother he believed that he understood the rudiments of giving that kind of sacrifice and the Bible says he wanted to sacrifice and do something for God but his combinations were wrong where they received and then his brother Abel, which is a type of the new church, came and put that sacrifice according to pattern. 
So God is revealing divine patterns on how to do spiritual things such that they become acceptable sacrifices. And this will cause the way we run ministry as we know to change for many ministries. Happy are ministries that can align and take the pain and, and forget about the ego and allow it to happen. But for those who will not change, mene, mene, tekel, ufesen. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Hallelujah. So the first thing that God is doing right now is correcting errors. Let me tell you, don't confuse this. This is what is happening in the body of Christ. God is raising prophetic and apostolic voices who are coming after the order of Elijah with the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Their focus and everything they do by votes and leads people directly to the Christ of God. And they will come with grace. They will deliver mysteries that are uncommon. The fact that these mysteries are uncommon does not mean it is not of God. It will be resisted, but that which is born of God always overcomes. So eventually, light will surpass darkness. It will be strange. When Jesus came, bringing the gospel of the kingdom, the Bible says, the people say, from whence cometh this man? He speaks as one with authority and not as the scribes. The Bible says, when they saw the miracles and the things he did, they said, we have never seen it in this fashion. That means there is a fashion that is coming. And that's why God is preparing you. That you are hearing this message tonight, I want you to know that you are part of the agenda of God. Are you listening to me? That you are hearing this message, whether inside or outside. That you are hearing this message. And for as many around this country and the world who will hear this message and those who are streaming online, I'm telling you that there is an agenda. And for you to be hearing this message, you are part of it. Just as God is using me, there are many prophetic voices scattered around the world. Not many, as it were. But many in that they are within reach. That God is raising. The message is the same. The expressions must be different. Because we are different. But the passion and the communications of the spirit is the same. Preparing the bride. It is the spirit and the bride that will ask this word to come. Can you just pray in tongues as you are seated in one minute? Jibra tese balada bako sofroto balada bakari ala balada bako Zimbre de gale balada bash Zibre gede balada da rosh Zibre gede balada da da bako sofra gede balada ba Ziba kata prata shala balada rosh Yes Lord we hear your voice We hearken unto the voice of the spirit and we understand the handwritings that you are writing on the wall. You must open your heart. Some of the things I've shared have challenged some of you. Search the scriptures. And you will find that the word of God is consistent. Come on, just, just express your spirit in, in one or two minutes. The remnant of the house of Jacob, the uncompromising generation, kept under the custody of Obadiah, 7,000 who have refused to bow to Baal. Yeah, yeah.
Come on, ventilate your spirit. Just let it find expression. Yeah. One minute I will continue. Outside, make sure you are stretching. We hear the sounds of the spirit. to the hill of the Lord. We press higher in the spirit. It may cost us now, but we will pay the price. We will soar to the spirit. We will labor in knowledge, uncompromising. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let it rain. of heaven let it rain would you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven The portals of glory. Yeah. Yeah. Would you open the fountains of your presence? and terrible day the spirit of Elijah will be poured upon the body of Christ and now is that time in the prophetic blueprint of the spirit where those who are interested Elijah worshippers Elijah preachers Elijah businessmen Elijah workers Elijah politicians men crafted forged out of the furnace of affliction with scars that represent their dealings in the spirit 
men who have endured pain men who have endured tears men who have died to themselves and their agendas Elijah's in the military Elijah's in business it's the spirit of prophecy that will testify only of Christ and of his agenda listen when the spirit of Elijah comes the spirit of Elijah will tear down walls the spirit of Elijah will first be destructive and then constructive it will break down patterns that have been built after Babel for there is a rebuilding of the tower of Babel but the spirit of Elijah is an audacious spirit. It's a prophetic and apostolic spirit of prophecy that comes to correct the errors of the fathers, to correct the errors. And they shall be called the repairers of the bridge. They shall rebuild the walls and raise the desolations of all generations. They shall be called the repairers of the bridge. The repairers of the bridge they will fix that which was spoiled they will fix that which has been popular yet not in synchrony not in tandem with the workings of the spirit they will have ears that are sharp they will have eyes with the visions of an eagle and they will be able to decipher the writings on the wall they will hearken to the voice of his majesty and will only build the house according to divine pattern they will introduce a fire that will burn everything and test everything it will be a refiner's fire they will come after the order of elijah that the word of god from their mouth will be like fire it will burn it will reshape it will construct partake barataya they will be men of power men of force men of grace men of dexterity audacity they will have power in the heavens it is during that time that the sun will be turned into blood and there will be signs in the earth there will be wonders because the manifestation of this man i bring to you body of christ blow the trumpet I come with an apostolic mantle. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. The seasons are changing. There is a renaissance, a rebirth of the Elijah church, correcting the errors of the fathers. Men of authentic power, men of grace men of revelation and insight that have not been taught by any man comparing spiritual things with spiritual that is only taught by the agency of the holy ghost those who have searched and understood where the secret place of the most high is they have found it they've come there and they will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Take us to that place. Let there be a burden of the Elijah church. Let there be a burden of the Elijah church in Abuja, in Lagos, in Zaria, in Portacot, all over Nigeria. Let there be a burden. We blow the shofar. We authorize heaven. Elijah's arise Elijah's arise Elijah businessmen arise Elijah preachers arise Elijah worshippers arise with the spirit of prophecy which will only testify of no denomination of no sect but the Christ of God
Kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. Doctrines will rise against doctrines. Nations will rise against nations. There will be a clash of light and darkness. And the church of the Lord built upon the rock shall stand. Tried by fire. Men who have been battered from the furnace of pain and affliction. With no agenda of their own whatsoever. This is a message from the Lord to the body of Christ. The spirit of Elijah cometh. The spirit of prophecy. There will be a restoration of the accurate interpretation of the truth of the word. Accurate. Accurate. Given by the Holy Ghost, the one who inspired it, accurate interpretation of scriptures. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. The Lord told me that what will begin to happen is an exposition of darkness. You will hear things on media that will shock you. Darkness will be exposed. The veils that have covered the eyes of men for years will be exposed. Mene, mene, tekel, ufasen. I sound it. And I prophesied as I was commanded. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. The altars of Baal. Judgment is coming upon the body of Christ. And there will be a smashing down. For many have been weighed in a balance. And they have been found wanting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the destruction of the altars of Baal, the next will be a fresh walk upon the saints, preparing them for the last apostolic revival that will be coming upon the earth. That will be the next mission of the spirit of Elijah. First to tear down walls, to correct error, and then to begin to rebuild the saints. There will be a restoration of the true apostolic, the true prophetic, the true evangelistic, the true pastoral and teacher offices. Then once again, men will begin to call upon the name of the God that will not be strange unto them. Men will begin to call upon the God that they know and have a working relationship with. And I tell you friends, when that begins to happen, it will announce the greatest revival Smith Wigglesworth prophesied it. The generals of old prophesied it. I announce to you, there is coming a revival. Everything that will be shaken will be shaken. The newspapers will no longer carry stories of politicians. The captions will be the fire of the spirit. 
our media we will not need to pay to go on air the impact will be so great it will make news the fire will fall in nations you did not expect and then after that the heavens will be open and once again we will see him the king of kings the lord of lords the alpha and the omega he will come gloriously upon the silvery cloud and his feet will not touch the earth and the victorious church now without spot or wrinkle will be caught up and we will meet with him and it will begin another dispensation and then the spirit and the pride we say come lord come lord yes to your agenda yes to your agenda yes to your agenda we make way for the coming of the lord jesus we make way for the revival jesus is coming preachers don't preach it again i'm telling you jesus is coming with the blast of the archangel he will come for a victorious church his coming is soon that's why the spirit of elijah is released upon the body jesus is coming this same jesus whom you have seen go to heaven will return in the exact same manner i bring you a message jesus christ is returning to planet earth jesus christ is returning it will happen it's not a myth it's not a legend a day will come there will be no more business there will be no more APU. An agenda bigger than it will unfold. We are at the ending periods. Let him that has an ear hear and give priority to the agenda of the Spirit. Every other thing will become temporal. But only one agenda will stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is what God is doing right now. Right now. If you've ever tried to find out where the church is in prophecy, this is what God is doing right now. Any church, any man of God, you find with the spirit of Elijah tearing down the walls of Baal and building people is a true church. This is how you will know them that are of God and them that are not of God. And all the sorcerers and magicians and the soothsayers and the necromancers that appear they will fall together with Babylon I give you glory Lord hallelujah tonight is my night in the name of Jesus tonight is my night Hallelujah. Psalm 5, verse 7. Please remain standing if you can. Psalm 5 and verse 7. One of the reasons why we come into the house of the Lord is because we know that we will find mercy. He says, but as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship towards your holy temple. 
I will come in because I know there is multitude of mercy. Can someone pray in one minute? Lord, show me mercy tonight. Go ahead and pray. Show me mercy. Even the sure mercies of David. Even the sure mercies of David. In the name of Jesus. Father, this is your night. There are people gathered here expecting a touch from Jesus. There are people gathered here expecting healing, miracles. And Lord, you have called tonight a miracle service. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Lord, we pray that tonight will be a night of signs and even of wonders. Let there be manifold displays of your mercy, even in the midst of your people. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let age-long captivities bow to the name of Jesus. And I pray tonight that you will give everyone a new song. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to please be seated. God bless you. And be very sensitive. Pastor Shola, again, it's an honor. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And to the woman of God and all the ministers of the God here present, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I really, really sense a very strong manifestation of the power and the grace of God in this place. The Lord has brought us not to waste our time at all. When we appear before Him, the Bible says they go from strength to strength, as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Praise the name of the Lord. We began discussing the mercy of God in the morning, the little introduction that we had. And I did share with us, please, you can go online and watch and listen again very intently to the teaching. I told us that there are three platforms by which men relate with God and with the realm of the Spirit. That the first is emotions, the weakest of them all, based on feelings. The second is reasoning based on principles. The third and the highest platform for relationship is covenant. Hallelujah. Then we did explain a few things. I'm not doing so much of a teaching tonight because it's a miracle service. But I just felt very stirred in my heart just to read out a few scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. That is really my assignment. Um, the Lord just put a few scriptures that again remind us of the mercy of God. Do you know that it was an ancient Jewish practice that they would sit down and listen to it, it, it's, it's as though a chant of the word of God. And as they listened to it, the life and the power therein would come upon their spirit. It is powerful to hear the word. It is powerful to listen to what God has to say. Sometimes you may not necessarily need a sermon. What you just need sometimes is scripture. Direct scripture speaking to you. Hallelujah. I used to watch Benny Hinn do this many years ago. He would just have videos with a strong atmosphere of worship and just continue to read scriptures, read scriptures, and there would be such a dense manifestation of God's presence. Signs and wonders will break out. And now I understand better. T.L. Osborne of Blessed Memory used to do that a lot. In fact, when you read his books, his books on soul winning, his books on healing the sick, when you read most of his classics, that man, one of the reasons why this man excelled so much was the value they had for scripture. Hallelujah. This probably may be a message already for someone. You know, when the apostolic and the prophetic in the 60s into the 70s, when there was that move of God, especially across parts of Europe and then the West, 
most of them because of the gifts of the spirit and the manifestation of the power of god they ignore scripture they focus so much on manifestations and power the prophetic the apostolic and then men like Hagin and a few other people said look administering the gifts of the spirit will lead us to error superstition if we do not stick to scripture and then i remember Hagin said he told them that many of you will fade out and i will leave you not necessarily because i have better gifts than you i have better respect for scripture than you so this may be a call the greatest encounter that anyone can have is not the prophetic it's not the apostolic it's not even miracles and signs and wonders the greatest encounter that gives you balance continuity sustainability in your christian experience is an encounter with scripture all will fail there are imbalances with gifts but not scripture all scripture was inspired by the holy ghost but the bible says when it comes to the prophetic we see in part when it comes even to the apostolic there are times paul will say i speak as a man but when it has to do with scripture i have said it again that scripture was written so that it could not be changed the historic and geographic aspect of scripture was written by men having all kinds of imperfections but the spirit and life that is contained here came from the breath of god and it is still able to build i commend you he says to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified i'm saying this so that in as much as we celebrate gifts we celebrate anointings mantles where generation that is hungry for the power of god the move of god mantles all kinds of things the jurisdiction and the coordinates of balance continuity is when all of these gifts and these attributes of the spirit submit to the authority of scripture the moment you go out of the jurisdiction of scripture in administering spiritual things you will eventually no matter how sincere you are you will delve into different shades of error an imbalance this is part of what the body of christ is suffering today it may not necessarily be falsehood in many regards it is just that there is no regard for scripture as the basis and the guide for our administering the power of god scripture represents the boundary of god's commitment to the believer god cannot be committed to the believer out of the provisions of scripture that means everything you are about to experience tonight if there is no allowance permission or basis for it in scripture it is not a possibility that should happen to you even though it can happen to you there are many things not written in scripture that can happen to you but they will harm you because they do not have god's defense on them there are many ways to open your eyes in the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a vast realm and any spirit at all any spirit is able to route you through and open your eyes but all of them come with various effects it is only the holy spirit who is the representative he is the only one who can open you in a way that brings glory to jesus you can have visionary encounters by different influences demonic human and all of that but only that which is a derivative of scripture and the ministry of the holy spirit will edify you and edify all who listen to you are we together now i need to say this because many times when it has to do with a miracle service we just feel okay all we need right now is the power of god all we need right now is the prophetic all we need is healing just begin to speak and let things happen the anointing is useless until the word goes before it you have to understand this the ministry of the anointing is only activated when the word precedes it the anointing is a confirmer if there is no word the anointing has no ministry the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word becomes true in the life of the recipient that is the anointing so the anointing does not stop until the word stops looking like a lie in your life 
The reason why the anointing is still on you is because there are still things, yet the reality of Scripture is yet to be established practically in many aspects. So the anointing still has a ministry in your life, and then through you to others. Are we together? So, if the word says be healed, the anointing moves in that direction to insist that that word does not fail. It is amazing that in a miracle service like this, there are people seated here looking at me right now under all kinds of yokes and oppressions. And as I'm preaching, both you and the spirits oppressing you are hearing me. And yet they have not left you. Why? Because the word has not been sent to that effect. Are you seeing that now? Yes. There are people here who are sick. And in a few minutes, you're going to be celebrating miracles as if we are acting. And why is that so? Because once the word comes, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing is a system of authorization in the spirit. It legitimizes an operation. The anointing is proof that what was spoken had God's endorsement. If you speak and the anointing does not follow, it, the anointing is like a spiritual immigration officer. An accreditation system that says this one came from God. So let it be. Are we learning? You must respect scripture. I have found this in my experience. Because of the privilege of the apostolic that opens you up to the realms of the angelic visions, encounters. I have found this to be the most secured platform to stand as you dispense and minister the gifts. The margin of imperfection, inaccuracy, error becomes very, very small. And even smaller as you become transformed. But the moment you ignore this, the devil will slip through the sincerity of your heart and now begin to produce all kinds of extra-biblical activities you will be carried away by the results that is coming from them until you are swept away. Listen to what I'm telling you. I didn't even plan saying what I'm saying now. I believe that it's the Holy Spirit speaking to someone. Many of us are here to receive mantles, impartations, and you will receive. But let me tell you, your greatest zone of safety is to stand within the jurisdiction of Scripture. This is what our fathers handed down to us. It's the reason why men like T.L. Osborne, Reinhard Bonke, they would go from nation to nation, regardless the foundational issues, regardless the demonic things, they would minister with power, with signs and wonders, and they would return back. But right now, many of us, you can finish a ministration and almost not wake up the next day. Because scripture has not brought you that fortification, that system of defense against the onslaughts that come on account of the gospel. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture, which is able to make you wise. Is that true? Yes. If we want to see the power and the glory and the grace of God, we must know that it is best seen at the instance of scripture and then faith which is very important the bible says now it says faith um, cometh by hearing not hearing your problem your problem does not give you faith it's not anything you hear that gives you faith there is a content that produces faith just because you are hearing something being said does not mean faith is being imparted in you faith comes by hearing the hearing that brings understanding and that's by the word are we together yes so we want to see the power and the mercy of god find expression tonight and i want you to walk with me please as we look at a few scriptures number one psalm 102 verse 12 just a few minutes psalm 102 and verse 12 very powerful 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 scripture Psalms, what did I say? I'm not sure I got that right. Maybe I made a mistake there. Let's go to Psalm 136. Now be patient with this because this is powerful. Psalms 136. Oh, 13 now. I think that was where Psalms were. Okay, you have it already. Let's read it. One to read. 
thou shalt arise it says and have mercy upon joshua selman your name is not zion your name is not zion you are in zion but call your name with confidence thou shalt arise and have mercy upon joshua selman why for the time to favor him one more time someone prophesy to yourself thou shalt arise and have mercy upon joshua selman for the time to favor him yea someone say my time has come prophesy it with understanding my time has come in the name of jesus christ my time has come he says thou shall arise and you will have mercy upon zion for the time for the time to favor her you see let me tell you in this kingdom most times what the bible calls set time is the day you have understanding and you have faith today if you hear his voice he says today is any day you have understanding next verse psalms 136 let's start from verse 1 now do you know that this was a chant this was a song an expression of the mercy of god for the next 26 verses almost recite the same thing oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good he says for his mercies remember what we discussed in the morning the covenant of mercy with david his mercies endure how long number two he says give thanks unto the god of gods aha uh -huh. so he's not only god he is the god he's not even just the god of men he is the god of gods that means any other god that has been responsible for oppressing anyone every animal can roar like the lion until the lion roars any animal can mimic being the lion but when the lion roars the entire jungle knows that this one is king god of gods his mercy endure it forever verse 3 give thanks to now the lord of lords there are many people who are called my lord on earth judges my lord landlords 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 my lord some of you that's the name you don't want to hear because of the situation right now that you are in oh thank god you came for a miracle service because there is one who is called the Lord of Lords. For his mercy endures forever. Number four. To him alone who doeth wonders. So, are you seeing all these attributes? Because you will experience it tonight. He is not just the God of gods, not just the Lord of Lords, but to him who doeth wonders. Bishop Oyedeko defines wonder as whatever makes you wonder. It's called wonder. Whatever stops you from acting as if you did not see anything spectacular is called a wonder. For his mercy endures forever. Verse 5. It says, To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, his mercy endures forever. To him that made great lights, Jesus, man of God, he's the one who can make light to shine in a man's eyes. This is not just sunlight, illumination, not just light physically. God is responsible for the administration of light. And in this kingdom, we rise on the strength of the lights that we have. That same God, all these things happen by his mercy. He is showing you the credentials of mercy. What mercy is able to do? That all these possibilities happen at the instance of God's mercy. Verse 8. He made the sun to rule the day and all that by his mercy. Next verse. He made the moon and the stars to rule in the night. Jesus. This is a revelation. There are lights that rule in the day. But even when there is darkness, there are still lights that rule. That means whether you are in your morning or your night, you still have dominion. Because he has made lights for you to rule. If you are in the morning, there is light that rules. When there is darkness and chaos, he still made the moon and the stars to rule. And all this happened 
by his mercy. Be patient and follow me. Is God speaking to you already? To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn. He smote Egypt all by his mercy. He brought Israel out from among them. So what can he not bring you out of? Egypt, 430 years under that wizard called Pharaoh. And in one night, this one, by his mercy, he brought you out. Ah. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Listen to what you're singing. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? His mercies endure forever. Next verse, please. With a strong hand and with his, an outstretched arm, other versions say, for his mercies endure forever. Next verse, very quickly, please. 13. It says, To him that divided the Red Sea into parts. Red Sea means trouble. God can tear like a young boy is tearing a piece of paper god can hold what stands as a mountain and tear it into pieces so that it never comes water is the hardest thing to tear but god has a hand that can tear even water you try tearing water but there is a mystery by which he can hold the red sea and part it hither and thither for his mercy endures forever 15 if you have not found your case in all these stories yet, I don't know where you are coming from because I'm reading this because everyone, you are going to find your situation here. Are we together? And made Israel to pass through it. Can I tell you this? It's one thing to pass the sea, but it's another thing to help you pass through it. It takes mercy for you to arrive there. 15. He overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For his mercies endure forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness. To him who led his people through Nigeria. To him who led his people through the pandemic. I don't know what else to do. The mercy of God can bring direction. You can guess what to do and be punished for a wrong decision. But when the mercy of God guides you. To him who led his people through the wilderness. The wilderness is a dangerous place. You have heat, hunger, and animals. Wild beasts. That's what you find there. But when God leads you, you can pass through it as if it's not a wilderness. For his mercy endureth forever. Next verse. To him who smote great kings. For his mercies endured forever. Verse 18. He slew famous kings. That means anybody who beats his chest and says, over my dead body for you and your family to rise. Tell him God has had people like you. Before you came, noisemakers have appeared like you. Men who made all kinds of boastings. He has a track record by his mercy that slays, that slays even famous kings. 19. Sihon, king of the Amorites. This is a, a part of them. All those giant kings, you will soon see. Og, the king of Bashan, he was part of them. Twenty. And Og, the king of Bashan, this man was a giant. He still smote them. Next verse. We are reading to 26 and we stop. He gave their land for an inheritance. A heritage. His mercy endures forever. Twenty-two. Even an in a heritage unto Israel, his servant. Prepared blessings, we call it. God will slay someone, clear the way and say, go there. there. There is such a thing as prepared blessings. 23. By his mercy, who remembered us in our lowly estate. This is already a place for someone. 
where you have been forgotten so that everyone who should help you has forgotten you. If God remembers you, that's the most important thing. He will force anyone who has forgotten you to remember you. The king forgot Mordecai, but when God remembered him, he forced the king to remember him again. 24. By his mercy again, he had redeemed us from our enemies. Redemption at the instance of his mercy. Two more verses. Who giveth food? Aha. Uh -huh. Food to all flesh. Food to all flesh. The animal kingdom has never had to run around wondering, how are we going to eat this year? That God does not just give wisdom to find food. There are times He gives food directly. He gives food to how many? All flesh. Give us this day our daily bread. There is such a thing called daily bread. If you have not been collecting yours, ignorance can punish you. This miracle service insist and say, Lord, according to the reality of redemption, there is a provision that is daily. Daily bread is not daily money. Daily bread is daily provision. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. For his mercies endure forever. Listen, I want you to see that almost everything that happens to men that needs the attention of God comes at the instance of his mercy. You have to understand this. The mercy of God is very powerful. Can we look at a few more scriptures? Are you tired? Hmm. Psalm 6 and verse 2. Let's look at a few more. Psalm 6 and verse 2. For those who need healing, it will happen by the mercy of God. It says, have mercy upon me, O Lord. Why? For I am weak, he says. Heal me. For my bones are vexed. So every healing miracle that you celebrate tonight and you see in your life, know that more than a display of power, it is a display of the mercy of God. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. Psalm 9 and verse 13. Psalm 9 and verse 13. The mercy of God also brings people out of trouble. It does not just bring healing. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me, that thou lifted me up from the gate of death. Somebody say, lift me. Please shout it again. Say, lift me. The mercy of God can save you from trouble by lifting you above the realm where that trouble exists. Psalms 18 and verse 50. Even deliverance to kings and nobles come by the mercy of God. Please read with me. It says, Great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed, even to David and to his seed. Say as for me and my family and my children. And mention any other person close to you that this deliverance is not only for you tonight because it says when the mercy of God comes, he brings deliverance to kings, to the anointed, and to his seed, even forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Popular one now. Psalm 90 and verse 14. Psalm 90 and verse 14. Oh, satisfy household of David early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad in our days. Have you seen hungry people laughing? Please talk to me. They, there is a saying that a hungry man is an angry man. When you see people laughing, it's not only a sign of joy for nothing. It's a sign that their needs have been met. He that told ye have asked for nothing, he says, ask that you will receive that your joy may be complete. Someone say, Lord, satisfy me early. I found one scripture that I thought was really very powerful. Second Corinthians chapter 4 
and verse 1. This is for everyone, but this is particularly for servants of God. This is the secret for sustainability. One of the secrets for continuity. It says, therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. It's one thing to have the ministry and the assignment. Between the ministry and continuity, or the ministry and fainting, is mercy. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, this business, this family, if we must continue, it will happen because we have received mercy. Mercy, therefore, listen to me, is behind almost everything that the believer receives in this kingdom. Every dimension of blessing, prosperity, redemption, deliverance, impartation, at the back of it you will find mercy as part of the equation that makes for that possibility. To cry and contend for mercy is wisdom indeed. It may look like weakness. We run away from the idea of mercy because mercy looks like it is something for weak people. When you're talking about mercy, it looks as though, no, no, you're just some sinner somewhere. But mercy is a formula that makes for victory. Thou shall arise, he says, and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. That means even favor only follows when mercy leads. If mercy is not leading, favor will not go. Hallelujah. Every one healing, every one miracle, every one breakthrough, people have come with their prayer requests and we're going to be praying for these requests and you will be watching the wonder working power of God that God will arise in His power and His grace. I want you to know that behind all of those things is the display of the mercy of God. As you see the results that happen in your life after this conference, when people ask you, what is, how did this happen? Be wise and be careful to not draw any self-righteousness and self-confidence. Let them know that above and beyond everything I did, I am a product of that mercy, the sure mercy of David. Why are we gathered tonight? We are gathered tonight as proof that we are recipients of God's mercy and that we want to see that mercy come to pass, manifesting in our lives in experience. How do the sick know they will be healed tonight? Not just because of Joshua Selman, not just because of household of David. It will happen because there is a covenant. The mercy of God is more than a desire. The mercy of God is more than a gift. It is a covenant. He has bound himself with that covenant. From David through Jesus to me and to you. One more time. From David, other people had received mercy. But it was David that institutionalized it. That it became a covenant between God and him. And his seed now also being Christ, the son of David. And now because we have been grafted into Christ, we become partakers and benefactors of the sure mercies of David. What gives you confidence that you will finish this year well? Oh, my uncle just returned to Nigeria. No, no. The sure mercies of David. Yes, it is true that there are arrows that fly by day. It is true that there are noisome pestilences. It is true that there are enemies left, right, and center. But it was the same David who said, Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, Where is my God? He says, But thou, O Lord, that same God of mercy, you are a shield for me. He says, My glory. And he says, You are the lifter up of my head. I lay me down, he said, and I slept. I waked. He says, for the Lord, sustain me. Can I tell you this sincerely? This man standing before you is a product of God's mercy. 
I know what it means to be a partaker of God's mercy. You will start back and watch things happen in a way that you will marvel, you will wonder and say, what kind of a God are you? And he says, a merciful God indeed. Many of us have seen different dimensions of God, but you have never really come into an awareness of the covenant of mercy. The covenant of mercy is not just something that happens just at redemption and stops there. It's a system of advantage that you should have in your life. And that with it you will walk wonders by the Spirit of God. You see, when you understand the mercy of God, when people are clapping for you and doing all of these things, and you just back up a bit, it's not just some false humility. It's an awareness of what your life would be or look like outside of the mercy of God. I cannot even imagine my life outside of God's mercy. There are people I know, you may have heard me say it in my teachings. Thank God for the grace to fast and pray. And most people think that those things are the only things that control the power of God. I tell you, there are parts of the equation of a man's success that even him cannot complete it. Any man who can complete the equation of his results is a liar. There is a part of that equation that only God can complete. Yours is to walk in obedience according to the integrity of scripture. But then at the same time, you will look at it. I told you, I've, most times when people are fasting, I round up that fast with them. I know a gentleman who fasted for 400 days, 6 to 6. I wrapped up the last day with him. I'm not sure he has raised one person from a wheelchair, as I know. I prayed for an elderly woman in Kano. Many years ago, when we went for a crusade, she finishes her Hausa Bible every two, two weeks. Two, two weeks. I want her to kneel down there to say, pray for me first, before I continue ministering. A woman who is an intercessor finishing her Bible two weeks, yet the same people will sit down and hear you teach mysteries that they could not find, as diligent as they were. Shout mercy. Some of you, it was your coming late that gave you a job. Is that fair? Everybody who came early did not see the director. Just when you were coming late, you were colliding with him. Something that should have been for your punishment. There is a side to a man's life that only mercy can explain. There are results that when you see, it's not power that brought it. It's mercy. You can have money, but if you do not have the gift of men, Money does not have legs. It does not work. It is only useful because of the men that receive it. The mercy of God. That can take a young boy called David. Tending sheep. Smelling with sheep. Many years later. This will be the king. That today the nation of Israel is represented with that star. It's not called the star of Moses. It's called the star of David. As for me, I have found a place of refuge. The mercy of God. My life is the mercy of God. Every time I'm alone with God, I say, Lord, I thank you. Sometimes I roll from left to right and I say, Lord, thank you. Even the grace to obey you is still your mercy. You know how hard obedience is? Ask yourself why you have learned so much and yet obeyed so little. Because until God shows you mercy, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. Household of David is a product and a real genuine expression of God's mercy. One day I was talking with a man of God who seemed to have been frustrated in ministry and I was asking him a few questions and honestly by God, Pastor, I will tell you, everything I know that makes ministry work, the man was doing it with sincerity of heart. Honestly, is it character, is it godliness, is it diligence, is it all of these principles. But this thing was not just answering. Mighty person, 
yet doors would not open. And the only thing that came to my mind was let's just pray the prayer of mercy. It was a story that I heard years ago that there was a pastor's conference and our father in the Lord Baba Deboe was there with a lot of other pastors. And when it was time for prayer, you know, everybody cried to God. Men of God were crying, Lord, I must reproduce this campground. I must do, you know, people were praying all kinds of prayer. And someone who had the privilege of lying down close to our father in the Lord as he just laid down to pray, he said for close to two hours, all he was hearing was mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy. You can see the land to buy, but it's mercy that brings the resources home. You will stand in front of that land till they buy everything in your presence. Shout mercy. You can preach correctly and never have partners to support you. There are good people suffering in ministry. Nobody to arise and help them. The mercy of God. Tonight you are not only encountering healings and all of these things. You are stepping, you are bringing your consciousness into that covenant. Lord, I don't expect my life to be the same after today. Because I know now that I'm not just a recipient of redemption, but in it, there is the covenant of mercy. I expect exemption every day, always, and by all means. Refuse to expect things to happen the way it's happening for everybody. This is not just some Pentecostal motivation. Believe me when I tell you this. When you are aware of the power that is contained in the mercy of God, your life will always have exemptions. Always. One day a pastor called me, a dear friend, lovely man of God. I love him so much. And he said, Apostle, this is unfair. I said, what is it, sir? And he said, how can someone call me? He kept calling me for days. And he said, can you help me? Give me your account. I want to transfer money for you to help me send to Apostle. He said, what, what sort of a thing is this? You are calling. I'm not talking about money. Forgive me. But I'm just saying, the man was saying, I'm here. I'm a man of God. I love God. You are calling me for a long time. Not just to find out as though you are not aware I have ministry. And you are saying you want to transfer money. Let me help you take it to the apostle. And he was laughing. I joked with him. I said, let's share it. I mean, the Bible says, both those who keep the spoil and go for war, all of them should eat from it. Mercy. Mercy will make someone sit down like he's looking for a job. What are you waiting for? It's you he's waiting for from morning till evening. He says, God sent me to wait for you. And to see to it that you never cry again. First, you would think they are armed robbers. Until you see that they are people who love God. It is fearful to see a man who God has shown mercy. Their lives become an awesome wonder. Believe me, I know what I am saying. And one of the things I am praying is that all the benefits of mercy will land on someone's life this night. You see, brothers and sisters, Christianity without proof will frustrate you. The gospel is very hard when you don't have evidences. You will preach and shout and people don't believe you. Results are like a lubricator to the gospel. It makes the message powerful, cutting edge. It makes it easy and people come and say, no, this is the Jesus that I serve. Some of you here are men and women of God. Some of you are younger ministers coming. Can I tell you this? When the Lord shows you mercy in ministry, you will step back and people will look at you one day and say, I hope you've not started using charms. You say, no, 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 no. I still fear God as before. I only came for House of David conference, the higher ground conference, and my consciousness about the mercy of God came afresh again. Again. I testify, I testify. That your goodness is real. I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify, your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify, your goodness is real. Your mercy is real. I testify your mercies are real. That after tonight, ladies and gentlemen, 
when they are trying to teach someone mercy and he's not understanding, they will just hold your hand and say, just look at his life. I'm tired of talking. Just look at the life. Now do you understand what the mercy of God? I, I've been trying to explain it to you and it looks like there is difficulty in understanding. So instead of giving you stories after story, let me bring a living epistle, a representation of the mercy of Jesus. David. God entering a covenant with him to say, no matter what it is, I will establish your throne and your influence forever. Believe me, mercy is powerful. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious Redeemer and friend. Who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Just that first part. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend. The day Jesus came to me, I was not fasting. I was not praying. No. When he came to me, there were people who were already fasting and praying. Why he left them and came to me is something I cannot explain. I know people who have been fasting. Jesus, if you, if you will not reveal yourself, just kill me. They have not died and he has not come. And here is a man who is lying down quietly and this visitor steps in in his majesty when I started seeing angels I was not praying for my eyes to, to be opened when I started having encounters with the saints of old those you read about in the Bible I don't just read about them I have seen them it is the mercy of God thank God for all of these principles it is the mercy of God. What the Lord continues to do today in my life, in this ministry, I'm saying it in the open. Thank God for the principles we keep and we honor God for the grace to do so. But there is a part of it that we cannot explain. There is a part of it that we cannot explain. There are things that if you see, if you are honest, you should be unashamed to tell people, this one is the mercy of God. This one. And in a few minutes, I'm going to begin to minister. I want your heart to be open. There are many things that when I started seeing results from them, I had not really understood their dynamics. Yet, I was still getting results from them. It is the mercy of God. Most people would not admit this because we like being superstars. We like showing like we were in control of everything. I will tell you sincerely. When the prophetic came upon me, it was the mercy of God. Signs and wonders, the mercy of God. That's why when people are clapping and saying other things, I step back and I say, I don't know who you are talking about. Oh. But I know. The mercy of God. Some of you, you have ignored the mercy of God. Your whole attention is on your gift. Your whole attention is on your charisma. That's why it's not working. You need to understand that there is a covenant of God's mercy. Can I tell you this? There is nothing you can do about a man who God has invested his jealousy upon. They will not look like it, but they will keep producing the results. There is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. We had a miracle service on Sunday. Many of you followed. 
when I stood and I was hearing the testimonies and I saw these guys from bed, scammerers, from bed, in a moment, I stood there and I could imagine people looking at me. Oh, this man, powerful. Say, powerful? If I stand before a scammerer one-on-one, you think, I would just pray and say, Lord, you said lay hands on the sick. This is why we give God glory unashamedly. Sometimes men will seek to clap and say, no, 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 it can't be all God now. It's all God, oh. It's all God. You are in ministry here, let me tell you. The more people see you acknowledging God as the basis of everything, they will not demean you. Rather, they will see Jesus magnified and glorified. And then God says, you did this through me. You had the opportunity to push me and stand and enjoy the stage. But now that you have done this, it's not only grace and wisdom that is multiplied. Mercy also can be multiplied. God can multiply mercy over your life. For some of you, you have tasted of a dimension of his mercy. But it's time to dive deeper into that river and watch the wonder of what the power of God can do. As for me, I've made up my mind. I would never go out of the jurisdiction of his mercy. Like I'm standing guarded by this carpet, this ground. I stand there. Lord, others may trust in horses. Others may trust in chariots. I don't know how they do it. But I came from a background where I don't even, I cannot make any boast. Demographically speaking. Oh, but the mercy of God. The mercy of God. I'm preaching to you like this so that you can understand the place of God's mercy. And tap into it and shake all the limitations. When people are saying, can anything good come out of this family? Like a plane, you just rise from the ground. And they say, where are you coming from? And he said, do you know this fuel called mercy? The same way you have fuel that powers a jet. Before a plane lifts, it's moving slowly as if it's afraid to fly. Just keep watching. Sometimes in less than a minute, I sense in my spirit that someone here... What has been happening to you is like even you, you don't understand the pace. But at this conference, there is this grace that is coming on you. And you will move with such speed, you will marvel and wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. Am I wasting your time? Can I tell you this? Everything you have admired in anybody at all, God is able to give it to you. At the instance of his mercy, the same Lord is rich unto all. But many do not know that there is a covenant of that mercy. But let me just say one thing before we pray. Listen carefully. David triggered that covenant and that mercy through his passion and his desire to see Jesus glorified. I have to tell you this. Remember we said this mercy is a covenant. And that in covenants there are terms. David said I am staying in a palace. Beautified. By cedar. And yet the ark of God. Is lying behind curtains in a tabernacle somewhere. He says no. I will not find rest. Nobody asks me to. But my heart, because of my love for Jesus, because of my love for God, I cannot allow the ark of God to be lying outside in the cold Why I'm here enjoying the beauty of royalty. No, Prophet Nathan, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to start a project and build God a house immediately. God himself woke the prophets and said, Nathan, stand up. I need to send you to David. Even though I don't need a house, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. But because this man has put it in his heart that you will exalt me more than your reputation, you are okay with your palace, you have security. Can I tell you this? The covenant of mercy is only activated in experience in the life of men who desire Jesus lifted and glorified more than their ambition. The covenant of mercy is not some cheap route to just find fame and push God out. This is why many, many people do not experience it. All the lusts that are locked up in our hearts. 
We pray and we fast, but we are just hoping, let that anointing just come. So all the pastors know I'm not an ordinary man and God says nonsense. I'm not a politician. There is one condition tonight. You want to stand in reality. Hear me, you are a minister of the gospel. You can fast, you can pray, but more than that, the sincerity and the purity of your heart. The desire to see Jesus lifted. I stand before the God of heaven. I have never looked for an ambition to want a name, to want all of this. If I die today, God forbid. But after seven days, they will bury me and the program of God will still continue. Please call laborers in the gospel. Let's get ourselves to order. This chasing after mundane ambitions of ministry, wanting fame, competition, fighting, those are the things that take people to hell. Our assignment is to see Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. All the blessings that come whilst we are doing that, we receive with joy, but never to be distracted. Never to be distracted. You want to see the mercy of God in your life? must shelve away all those desire to outshine desire to compete desire to be the leading voice desire to be this and that john said i must decrease i sh i'm sharing with you a simple but powerful secret you can fast you can pray you can study scripture you can run around with oils and hands are laid on you have not been sarcastic but if your heart condition that desires to see Jesus lifted more than your name, lifted more than your fame, lifted more than your ministry or your church. If he becomes an idol, forget about genuine spiritual power. Forget about grace over nations and territories. A territory will not just listen to you because you can teach Greek and Hebrew. There are many intelligent people who understand scripture and still wonder why they are not rising. Are we learning? This is the one thing we need to bring back to the body of Christ. This carnality of search for fame and power. Many of us may have failed from our backgrounds. And so we try to use ministry as a scapegoat for fame. Let me prove to people there is nothing to prove. Except Jesus crucified, Jesus glorified. That's it. Whoever does not believe in you, that's their cup of tea. Whoever believes in you, glory be to God for them. Jesus. So more than Joshua Selman, more than your pastor and his wife, the angels over this house, for all the miracles and all the signs and wonders and all the things that happen, can I tell you this sincerely? Your heart must be to reveal Jesus. Do not be glorified. Do not be ashamed if the applause for Jesus looks louder than yours. Be happy because that is your safety. By the time they clap for me more than they clap for Jesus, I'm in trouble. Trouble! Run away from it. The man standing before you is not stupid. I've stood before kings. I know what it means to be honored. I tell you sincerely by God, I count it but dung for the excellency of the name of Jesus. The excellency of the name of Jesus. Let fame go where it will go. All these funny things. Never forget where God brought you from. These are the keys David will say it again and again. I was in the wilderness. Many of you have forgotten. Little anointing, little revelation, and people will not rest again. Repent while we are praying for the sick so that you get yourself back to order. Some of you younger ministers who are coming, be careful where you learn your mentorship from. Don't learn rubbish and don't learn nonsense. Humility and acknowledging God has been the key that lifted our Father still today. It will not change. I am the Lord. I change it not. Thank God for Joshua Selman. Thank God for Pastor Shola. Thank God for household of David. But tonight, more than men, it is Jesus. It is of the Lord's mercy. If you have the health to preach, it is God's mercy. There are people who are alive and their brains are not working. That you can read and you can understand. It is of the Lord's mercy. That you can fast and pray and get results. As a man of God, you can say, be healed and someone is actually coming. 
I, I was healed. Even if it is headache, it deserves clap. So we are going to pray. This is the real miracle service. The prayer for the sick is not an issue. Within minutes now, God, it, the power of God, this is the kind of atmosphere the Holy Spirit likes. The atmosphere that glorifies Jesus. It is easy for Him to move. But when we come and take the center stage and waste the time of God's people, it becomes difficult for God to... That's why we act like sometimes as if we are harbalists on stage. It is very hard because Jesus has not been revealed. Just reveal Jesus and step back and watch the Holy Spirit confirm the fact that He's alive and He's merciful. Honestly, I didn't plan to say all these things. So, this is the thing about the Holy Spirit. I just plan to read my scriptures as God directed me and to start praying for the sick. But I'm sure the Holy Spirit has targeted someone. He made sure you came for this meeting. Because he loves you so much. It is still messy that you are hearing this thing. Instead of making 10 years mistake. This may look little but God may have delivered you from 10 years of mistakes. Hallelujah. Let us return as the body of Christ. To a place where we genuinely, not stage pretense. Lord be glorified whereas we are full of pride and full of ourselves. It must be genuine. It must be sincere. Receive the honor. There's nothing you can do about it. Can you take that revelation to your office? Can you take that revelation to wherever you go to? That you are seeing miracles happen in your office. People are going down and yet your company is rising. They ask you what is the reason and you smile and God said you had that message. You had that message on Saturday. Ah, you step back. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom and the intellect, but Jesus be glorified. It is of your mercy. And people say, is it true? And God says, let me show you it is true. Let's go to the next level. And God just takes you from glory to glory. When it looks too easy, it is mercy pushing it. Every time it looks too easy, it is the mercy of God pushing you. Please rise up on your feet. Two prayer points, and then we'll pray for the sick and just minister. Please, if we can have the prayer requests so that we'll be very fast. Tonight is a night you will not forget in a hurry. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. Prayer point number one. Lord, every idol in my life and my heart that will not allow me see G or allow me reveal Jesus through my results, in the name of Jesus, I dethrone that idol right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Idols of pride, all kinds of idols, flesh. The desire to be known, to be seen more than the desire to reveal Jesus. Household of David, are you praying? Following online from whatever nation, please pray. Lord, let that circumcision tonight happen in my heart. Let that circumcision happen. Go ahead. We dethrone every idol, every ulterior desire, Remember, it is you and Jesus tonight. Search my heart, oh God, I'm not ashamed. In this conference, my heart is open. Is someone praying? I am the Lord, I search the heart, I try the reins. Search my heart. And make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am in all I know. There's a prayer. 
Search all those desires. I am not ashamed. I am open before you. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Pray it one more time. Lord, my heart is open before you. There is no pretending. Search me through and through till my heart becomes This is the key that I know. When a man opens up his heart and says, Lord, search me genuinely. More than all this desire for things, it is that you'll be revealed in my life. Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in my business. And they glorified God through the work God has given me. And they glorified God through my children. Prayer point number two. Now you're going to pray. Now that your heart is aright with God, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, afresh, I step into this covenant of your mercy consciously from David through Jesus Christ. Now with understanding. In my life and my children, I make up my mind that from today and for the rest of my life, I walk with this consciousness that I am a, a part of the benefactors or the recipients of this mercy, the mercy that is called the sure mercies of David. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, by this mercy, fight my battle, oh God. By this message, continue to lift me and all who are connected to me. By this covenant like Jabez, enlarge my coast. By this mercy, bring me into prepared blessings. Listen, the next 
next 10 or 15 minutes, the Lord is going to be bringing visitations to our lives inside, outside. Now that you have listened and you have understood the counsel of the Spirit, you have given Him room now to breathe upon you, to step in and change your life. And let me tell you, when it has to do with God, it is quick. In a moment, a twinkling of an eye, burdens lifted, yokes destroyed. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say, called blessing blessing trusting the lord for the fruit of the womb as i just raised that song i had blessing i want to pray if there's someone will be very very fast i'm going to pray for the sick trusting god for the fruit of the womb please if there's some please very quickly we we'll have to just walk with time the name of the lord is a strong tower What's your name? Blessing. How long have you been trusting? I want to pray for you. Look at me. You believe in Jesus and you are a worker in this ministry. Amazing. Let me pray for you. Father, even as you called her, in Jesus' name we stand by the mercy of God. Let reproach of all sorts, let it live right now. We declare that according to the time of life, you return with this miracle of fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to shout hallelujah three times. At the third shout, please bring everyone under the anointing out here. This is what I just heard in my spirit. Listen to me. At that third shout, what I just saw was doors with ropes like tying those doors there are people who have whose destinies have refused to move completely no matter what they've done those doors are shut just three times this is the instruction god is giving i tell you inside and outside the power of god that will rest upon you for many of you it, it will be a dislodging of the gates of darkness are, are you ready for that Usually I just call one, two, three, but what God gave me, he said hallelujah three times. Are you ready? That, don't drive that woman. There is something mighty God is already doing. Look at me, young lady. Look at me, lift your hands. Bring her out here. May that fire and that grace come upon you now. Take that grace right now. Bring her here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? When I shout one, you shout hallelujah. The third time, please be ready, my goodness. One. Help them, help them, please. Two. Now get ready, get ready, get ready. Bring them out. Household of David. Something is about to rest. Those doors that have refused to open. Are you ready now? Three. Bring them out. Please, whether you are an usher or not, help them. Help anyone under the anointing close to you. 
Don't wait for the ushers. Hold that lady, please. Don't wait until you are an usher. Bring them out. Please open your mouth. Begin to pray. Every door closed over my destiny. Now it opens. Bring them out. We'll be very fast. At most speed. to crush the spirit of delay there are many people it looks like doors are not opening in your life in the name of jesus i want you to bring them out i decree and declare anyone whether in ministry in business in family every power that has held you down that you will not move forward here at this higher ground conference at the count of three may fire fall from heaven one two Three, release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Release them. Help them, please. Release them now. In the name of Jesus. Wherefore, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. Wrong care. I'm hearing the name wrong care. Who has a name wrong care? We have to hurry up tonight. I'm hearing a name wrong care. Wrong care. Where are you coming from, ma? Where are you from? Huh? Please, if it's not your name, don't come. Let's, let's hurry up. God is visiting I just saw lights towards this direction. There are two people. The power of God is coming on them now. Bring them out. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, even as I've seen in my vision, that grace is to shift you. I'm about to pray for speed. This woman, help her. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who among you is from Ogun State? Ogun State. Wrong care from Ogun State. Who is that, Mama? Stand up. Where are you from? Ogun State. Ogun State. You are a member of this church? Almost. Okay, you are, not, you are not yet a member. I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing the Lord is telling me, look at me. The dream you had, the Lord is saying he wants to cancel everything that represents delay in your family. This is what I'm seeing. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Be sensitive. I'm about to pray right now that every power that is not of God, sitting on any man's destiny, by the mercy of God, it must give way. Mama, please stand up. In the name of Jesus, I declare that by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let that demonic thing, that siege over your life, let it come to an end right now. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is coming on one of you in front here right now. I just saw like fire coming on you. Help them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, even by the power of Jesus. He said, all hail the power of Jesus. Crown him Lord of Lords. I declare over you, my dear, look at me. Look at me, two of you. Hold your hands together. I saw fire coming on you. Take that grace. Help them, please. That fire on two of you. In the name of Jesus. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Now I want to pray. There are spirits behind families. 
There are spirits behind destinies. I want to cause those spirits by the mercy of God. Hear me. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Except God is not God or any spirit behind the tragedies and the patterns of your life. It must give way right now. Father, I decree and declare spirits connected to foundations and ancestry. My Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. At the count of three, let there be a separation. Are you ready now? One, inside, outside. Two, three, shout Jesus. I command those spirits, go now. Help this woman. Release their fa- Help this woman, please. Release their families. In the name of Jesus. Every planting that is not of God, we arrest right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Adams. Who is Adams? I'm hearing a name, Adams. Adams. Is there someone with such a name? Adams. Please come very quickly. I'm hearing a name, Adams. We have a few minutes. I want to pray for the sick now. I'm hearing Adams because God is bringing a visitation to Adams. Paris, Kadila, Skona, Haskada, Bratia, Takasko, Debelea. Is there somebody called Adams? You are wearing a t-shirt or something like that. This is what I'm seeing in my vision. Adams. What's verify? What's your name? Adams. Come. You are a member of this church, sir. I want to pray for you. Your life is about to change. Look at me. What do you do? I work with a, I work with a firm. Deloitte. Huh? A firm. You work with a firm. God is lifting you to be a savior over your family. Amen. Look at me. You believe this? I want to pray for you. Your life will so change, you will be surprised. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have shown us what your mercy can do. Therefore, I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Hold that lady on red. I command, I'm seeing something look like out oh there. Let her go now. I release her. Now! In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go now. My friend, all this gentleman, release his family now. Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. And where the spirit of the Lord is. I'm seeing a woman among the ministers. I'm not seeing her physically. I don't know if she's there in a vision. She tied her hair. I'm seeing, I, I, I'm just seeing a vision. I don't know if she's gone out, but just this role. I don't know if there's such a woman because I want to pray. The power of God is coming on that person in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Bola, Bola, is it Bola or Bolani? Something like that. Bola is a gentleman. You are wearing like a black t shirt, it has like white, is it white stripes? Something like that. This one. What's your name? Huh? No, I'm seeing written on your head, Bola Day. What's your name? Come. Stand up, my friend. We are not herbalists. We fear Jesus Christ. Not everybody is faking this thing. Let me just say it very straight to the point. With every sense of humility. I know that here and there, there have been corruptions and perversions. But please, let us not mistake in what God is doing to me, maybe some, no, not everybody has bowed to bear. There are still people who fear the name of the Lord, sincerely. My friend, I want to pray for you. God is about to turn your family around. Where are you from? Hold on, please stand up. Where are you coming from? From Ogun State. We are from Ogun State. You are from Ogun State, but you are coming from Ogun State. Yes, I want to pray for you. Uh, Tell your family members the month of November. Uh, it's a strange month of breakthrough for them. Amen, amen. The month of November, in the name of Jesus, and that the Lord is bringing restoration to your family. Amen. Supernatural restoration. Amen. I'm seeing the number 11. 
as soon as I mentioned restoration, I just saw light coming on 11 people. I believe that this is the same word. I don't know where they are. But right now, 11 people, I just saw that light. Wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, help them. 11 people, restoration, enough is enough. That the things that have been stolen over your life, that you even thought has been forgotten, by this grace and this unction, in the name of Jesus, let there be restoration now. That lady on blue, the power of God is coming upon you. Restoration now, in the name of Jesus Christ, of things lost, of time, of relationships, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Respectfully, sir, I don't know who this man of God is, but look at me. Your life is about to change. Can I, can I talk to him, sir? Pastor, is it or can I talk to him? Please stand up, sir. You are, you are a pastor with a ministry. I need to pray for you. The prayer you were praying on your knees with what I'm seeing, God is about to answer it now. You are a pastor of a church. I want to pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed, sir. I have honor for ministers. It's, it's by the election of grace I'm doing this. It's not in any way at all any sense of superiority. But I want you to believe there is a grace that is coming on your life. And honestly, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will begin to see signs and wonders in a strange way in your life and your ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Please stand. Father, I pray for this man of God. You have opened up your heart in public. This is the same way God will honor you in public. Look at me, sir. Like fire from heaven, grace is coming on you. Take that grace now. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, I shift you and your ministry. I stand by this office of the apostolic and the prophetic. Let a new chapter be opened by God and by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every limitation, let it run away like smoke before the wind. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, can I talk to you? Are you a woman of God? Please come. If, if you are a pastor, I want to pray for you. Prophetic. I want to pray for you. The opening of a man's eye is mercy from God. My friend, shout Jesus as loud as you can. You. Help them. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, there are activations happening. Am I wasting your time? Praise the Lord. Please let your heart be open. We have a few minutes who will respect the time. But make sure that you ha don't come for meetings like this and go back the same. There is no reason for it. There is no reason for it. I pray for you, man. A thousand cubits is being measured for you in the spirit. It's a deeper level of the prophetic that God is bringing to you. Eyes that see and ears that hear. Even your hands, the Lord is saying that he will begin to use your hands to work miracles. Father... In the name of Jesus, let this happen for this woman right now. I shift you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me someone. You are part of the ushering, the ushering team in this church. Right now, wherever you are, I know ushers are scattered inside and outside. You don't have to come. But the power of God is coming on that person. The Lord is telling me that there is a separation for you because of what God is going to be using you to do in your family. I don't, among the ushers here at Household of David, God has been dealing with you. He has been showing you this. I don't know where they are, but in the name of Jesus right now, I know you have been helping others, but in Jesus' name, wherever you are, whether inside or outside, may the power of God locate you right now. Let it locate you right now. Let things begin to change and even shift in your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Now please, I want you to lay your hands. You're trusting God for a miracle everywhere. We're going to do this very fast. Hear me? Many of you are already getting healed. Some of you have already been perfected. I want to pray for you and rebuke that devil. We have just a few minutes. We have to honor our time. The moment I pray for you, somewhere in the prayer, I'm going to ask you to check yourself. 
the moment you find out that a miracle has happened, run like there's fire on the mountain. I want to come and stand here. Maybe if we can have one or two of the pastors, one or two people to just help confirm them. Let's take a few testimonies, proofs of the mercy of God, and then we'll be praying over these requests. We'll leave the final impartation for tomorrow's service. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is still a balance of this that is left. But for now, we have to walk with the time. Lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. I truly believe in miracles. My sister, this lady, you, lift your hands. I'm seeing oil coming on you. And the Lord is saying he's taking shame and reproach forever. Now, I decree and declare, shame and reproach, let it leave her right now. May that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. The Lord is saying the embargo of limitation over your family is coming to an end now. The wonder walking power of Jesus. Please lay your hands. We want to pray for the sick. Don't forbear with sickness. Don't forbear with sickness. No matter how little... When you give the devil a little hole, he will make a door out of it. Fight it! There's anything wrong with you right now. I'd like you to believe God for a miracle. I believe in miracles. I am a miracle myself. Inside, outside, all the overflows. Following online, just lay your hands. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. You can also stand in for others. Agree with me as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus... Your amen can be louder than that. Father, in the name of Jesus. My sister wearing, is it green or blue now? The Lord is taking something out of your stomach right now. I'm seeing a miracle happening. Immediately after that, check yourself. A miracle is happening to you right now. I decree and declare that every spirit that is back of infirmities of all sorts, the Bible declares, wherefore God had so highly exalted him, and given him a name, an office that is above every other name. It is by the power of that office that we decree and declare. Every spirit that is back of your infirmities, we command it to give way right now. We command it to give way right now. We command it to give way right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Migraine headaches. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. The Lord is healing migraines. Every bone condition. You came well with a crutch. You cannot walk well. Lift it up and begin to walk now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any blind eyes here, we command be open now. Deaf ears be open now. Bone conditions of all sorts be healed in the name of Jesus. Hear me? Every blood condition right now. That is your crutch. Is that what you came with? Lift it up. Mama, walk. Come. Come. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Come. Come. Walk. Don't be afraid. Just walk. Are you celebrating miracles here? Look at me. In the name of Jesus, help her. Stand behind her. I bring you life. Now. Leave her. Now. Let there be healing for her. Now. I bring life by this kingdom that we represent. Let there be healing. I straighten your bones. I bring you life by Jesus Christ. Are you celebrating what God is doing? Look at another miracle. Walk. Come. Lift it up and walk. Move, madam. Don't worry. Is this how you are celebrating miracles here at Household of David? Lift your legs. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Ah, look at this. Are you see, look at this woman. 
She's dancing. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Look at them. Hallelujah. Now, hear me. There is someone here. You have severe pain around your back. Look at the woman has thrown her crutch. Goodness. How were you, Mama? How was it for you before you came here? If I walk, this leg will, it will be as if I'm, this leg is paralyzed. But, huh, right now, do what I'm doing. Do what I'm doing. Do what I'm doing. Ah. Mama, hold on. How was it for you before you came here? I have a drop foot. You had. Drop foot. What? Foot. what? A, a drop foot. Yes, that's why I'm having. This was your. Give me her. This. This is yours. Yes. You came with it. Yes. Walk. Let the devil see you. In the name of Jesus. Look at this. in the name of Jesus every other condition the power of God is still coming on people I'm seeing asthma the Lord is healing asthma right now in the name of Jesus be healed now in the name of Jesus back pains severe back pains be healed right now conditions of pile in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle for you right now there is someone you are not using a crush, but I'm seeing something happen around your kneecap and you've not been able to walk well. Check yourself now. The power of God has come upon you. I'm seeing someone, your left ear, I don't know if it's completely deaf or partially deaf, but there is a miracle happening to you now. Check yourself. Check yourself. Whether I mentioned your case or not for the sake of time, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Inside and outside, be healed in Jesus' name. We change genotypes now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that everything, just keep them seats, let them sit. Everything that is not of God roaming around your body, we command its eviction now in Jesus' name. Now hear me. I want you to check yourself. Some of you, when you came under the anointing, it was the power of God was bringing you miracles. Check yourself very quickly. We have our time is up. You find out that a miracle has happened to you. I want you to leave your seat. Okay. I want you to run whether you are inside, outside. Are you seeing miracles happening? Run and come and stand here right now. Let the devil see what the mercy of God can do. Here at household of David. Check yourself. They are coming. Celebrate them. Miracles are happening. God is able to do just what He says He will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's goodness are you seeing what god is doing here tonight don't sit back we'll still have room for testimonies tomorrow i believe okay let's take a few testimonies who is with the mic okay very quickly come stand here so we see you very quickly straight to the point go ahead very quickly yeah, good evening sir i've actually been praying and fasting for an encounter with you sir there is something that always walk through my body like something is going through my body and tell me this young boy has been healed of something my goodness, my God. Let him stand here. I would like to hear his testimony. Don't hate children. If children run away from you, it's a sign 
that there is a wicked spirit around your life because children are very innocent. Children, you can literally use children to learn and gauge your spiritual growth. It's true. Yes. Does something always go through my body. Something goes through your body. Where are you from? from Ibadan. What happened to you now? When you asked me to shout Jesus, I felt something left you. Something left you. Wave it goodbye because it will never return to you again. My friend, look at me. In Jesus' name, may the power of God come upon you. New season. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly, let's coordinate them so we can make it. My name is Emmanuel. Please sit for a moment. Sit for a moment. We're about to pray on the request. Someone, can you help me? Is, is it alright if I Emmanuel. turn the request and we'll put it back? Okay. So, maybe some of the protocol help us. If you are yet to submit your request, while, while we're, just wave it. Someone will pick it up very quickly and we'll have it here. Yes, sir. My name is Manuel. Before can, can you turn a bit so that they'll see? Maybe stand sideways so that, yes. Go ahead. My name is Manuel. Before the uh, apostle began to minister, I was having a very severe pain. Severe right. pain. Where is that? Yeah, yeah. Around your neck. And my waist also. And your waist. But after the prayer now, I'm relieved. Run. Check yourself. Check. Any pain. Bend down. Bend down. Down, up. Down, up. Any pain. Are you celebrating Jesus? Where are you coming from, sir? Lagos, yeah. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. What, oh, it's a whole family. What happened? Very quickly. Um, the, today it was just weak. And because um, he had um, general type of SS and was weak. Very, very weak. And, oh, his SS. Yes. I and, see. And as we're ministering, then the Lord, I don't know, just started getting strength. And he says he's strong now. He's strong. The boy. Yes. What's his name? How are you? My name is Samuel. Oh, now, these are the kinds of smart children we should have. Samuel, look at me. Look at me. I want you to run to that uncle and come back. Go ahead, run. One on your mark, set, go. Look at this. Oh, this one is following him also. Oh, yes. Now, watch this. Any pain at all? Come, let me pray for you. In Jesus' name, not only... Just leave him to run around. You'll soon go with him. In the name of Jesus, hold my hand, my dear. I bless you. And we change your genotype here. Amen. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. I decree and declare, be healed now. Completely. For this one, in Jesus' name, we bless you. For this entire family, strength never depletes from you. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate Jesus. Bye-bye. God bless you. Yes. My name is Pastor Edith. I had You're a pastor? Yeah. Okay. A kneecap for like almost three years now. Your kneecap? Yeah, I was coming out from the bedroom and I fell down and the leg like squeezed. It twisted? Yeah. My but goodness. That long, I've taken a lot of medication, but the pain is there. But while you are ministering, the power of God came upon me. Well, those pastors will testify. And you mentioned it that there's someone in kneecap that did not just heal me. I Let the devil God. see you. <laughs> ah, household of David, come on. Are you celebrating miracles? Jesus. I never see anyone like you. 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 Yes, please. Very quickly. right at the extreme there. Okay. My pastor was praying about destiny. I had a sharp pain here. I was crying back there. But immediately I said, in the name of Jesus, it's out and it's disappeared. Completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never return. Never return in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Do you know, I love it when workers receive miracles. You know, most times workers have had issues with pastors. Why don't we get blessed and strangers come in the name of Jesus, workers will receive miracles here in this ministry by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Yes, yes, ma'am. My name is Elizabeth. While the service was going on, I had a, my tooth was aching me badly. I almost went out to take um, Panadol to relieve it. But even before the ministration started, it completely went. It completely died off. So completely. Right now, I can't even see in the name of Jesus Christ, let it never return to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. 
My name is Joseph Shaibu. I have a witness here. Prominent, please come. While, no, 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 don't while, come. Just stand where you while are. You, just... While you came up, Apostle, yes. my left ear closed. I've been having this ear condition where my ear opens and closes. So sometimes it feels like water there. Opens and closes? Yes, because For how when long? I was... For years now, because when okay. I was young, I, you know, I used to swim a lot, and water entered into my ears oh, a lot. So okay. I've been having the condition. So it's been affecting me. So when, while you came off stage, the left ear closed completely. And while you were preaching, gradually it was opening, and suddenly it busted open. It's open like and that. And now I am hearing very clearly. Place, place your hand there. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. The same way your ears has opened, may your destiny open up like that. My goodness, are you seeing these miracles? This whole testimony line? We'll find somewhere to break it and then all of them. Let's have someone in, in front so that maybe someone at the back already so that um, tomorrow we'll have a section, I believe, just for the testimonies. It's important for the nations to know what the mercy of Jesus can do. Hallelujah. God bless you, my friend. Quickly, please. Yes, please. My name is Emmanuel Chamaka. I've been having bad back pain for almost a month now but when daddy was ministering he asked us to touch where and right now it's gone completely it never returns to you again in jesus name yes please no 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 don't hold the mic my name is sam charles yes i've been having ear problems and when you were praying my left ear have always been paining me though i'm having issues with the two ears okay but only the left ear have been paining me yes so as you were ministering i was touching it it was paining me yes till you declared and now completely completely the pain is gone my god you know miracles come my friend you know miracles have messages attached to them if god can open ears he can open doors you see that in the name of jesus christ your miracle remains permanent in Jesus' name. Very quickly. Yes, please. My name is Abiodun. Let's just have a one or two or three more my notable ones. And then I we'll... came into this program with a heavy pound in my head for almost two weeks. I've taken drugs, it didn't go. But now, I can even see... My Your head was exactly. pounding you. In Jesus' name, we declare that this miracle remains permanent in your life. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. For some of you, the miracles you are seeing here... Go back to your ministries. You will go and reproduce the same results in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. My name is Adesha Oko. For over three years, I've been having severe pains around my neck to the shoulder and down to my back. And what happened this night? As we were praying, I felt a very warm sensation from my neck down. Check your neck. Check it. No pain. Any pain? In the name of Jesus, you will never return. You are free and free forever. Yes, please. My name is Ayobami. Um, three Thursdays ago, I traveled to Ibadan, so I had an accident. I even had a scratch on my hand. And you had an accident? Yes. So my left leg, there was a laceration on, in my foot. So during the course of the program, I fell under the anointing and it disappeared right now. Completely. Completely. Check yourself. Completely. Check yourself. Any pain? No, not at all. In the name of Jesus, I use him as a point of contact and pray. Every manifestation of the spirit of death, waiting for anyone on the road, or waiting for your children, waiting for your family members, we stand by this altar, and in the name of Jesus, you are exempted from death. You have no covenant with death, it will not find you. In Jesus' name I pray. And for you, in Jesus' name, let there be perfection for you now. Let's have two or three more people. My name is Gabriel. I'm the one uh, concerning the pile that uh, the man of God made mention. I was the one. But Im immediately he said it, it vanished. Pile? Yeah. Okay, so you, you can go to the hospital and check it, eh? In Jesus' name, it leaves you never to return. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. God bless you. Come, my dear. My name is Amore Boluatife. And when I met Jesus, he revealed to me that in the family of Amore, they were covenanted to a spirit of the banana tree. And anyone who does not serve that Spirit God is either blind, die, or anytime he's about to reach his place of destiny, he's struck with sickness and ailment. Okay. Even my father is struck, struck with glaucoma as a result of that. Was you prayed, I felt that covenant being broken and all of us being released. And all the destiny ties to the banana tree were released and the banana tree just caught fire. 
Job said in six things you will be delivered. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. He said that because you have a league with the stones, there is a covenant you have with the elements of creation. They cannot be used to make enchantment against you. Not only because you have dominion, but there is a covenant of peace that you have. I pray that one day God will grant us the grace to deal with it. The covenant of peace is more than restfulness. You see that? That no element of nature, all manifestations of witchcraft must use a medium. The supernatural expresses itself either in light, in fire, in the earth, in water, or wind. This, the supernatural cannot manifest in this realm outside of these elements. And you can have a covenant of peace with them. It is based on that that it says no enchantment against Jacob. You see, there is an understanding that sponsors that. This is what this our dear sister is trying to say. In the name of Jesus, we minister to you. Be delivered now, you and your family forever. Forever. And any, any bondage that has tied anyone, you inclusive, let there be deliverance for you right now. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus. Yes, please. My name is Pastor Shergon God's Glory. I've been having this excruciating pain at my lower abdomen for the past three weeks. And all of a sudden, about uh, four weeks ago, I also noticed that I have pains in this my jaw, uh, the right, uh, my yes. right jaw. But tonight, while the prayer was going on, what I happened? felt all completely gone. gone. Completely. It never returns to you in Jesus' name. Let this one be the last person. Come, my friend. What will happen is after him, I'm going to pray. Please do not feel embarrassed. I'm going to pray. What will happen is if, if, if um, there should be a way, maybe one of the pastors can guide them so that you know how to testify tomorrow during the testimony time the church service you can come and, and declare will that be fine sir yes so that we can just redeem the time but you hang on please until i pray for you yes please and those of you following online following from whatever nation you have been healed you have received a touch from god i believe that there is a management system online there let them know that god has touched you from whatever country let them know what jesus has done by his mercy yes please I'm John by name. Before I came for the meeting, I was feeling serious weakness, but I okay. said I must come. During the prayer, I felt infusion of strength, mm. and my, the nose that was running was completely dry. Supernaturally, yes, sir. in the name of Jesus, it never returns to you. Now, all of you who are standing out here, please lift your hands as an act of faith. Father, thank you. For all of these miracles, we declare to you be all the glory. They are expressions of your mercy. Let the nations know that you still are a merciful God and that your covenant of mercy, indeed the sure mercies of David, that is still in force. I declare that these healings, these breakthroughs, these miracles will never, never leave you. They remain with you to the glory of the name of Jesus. And I bless you, I decree and declare, you have come out to testify, it will never return to you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Now please, if you don't mind, I'd like you to stand and just stretch your hands towards this prayer request. Unto thou that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Just stretch your hands in one minute and begin to declare, even by the Spirit. Declare by the Spirit. Father, everything I have written here, I drop it down like the alabaster box. Every trouble that has um, buffeted my life, my family, my children, if there are more requests, just, just bring it. Those following online, you can connect by faith right now. Here at Household of David, we are agreeing by faith. In one minute, I'm going to bow my knees. You don't have to kneel. Let me do the kneeling. And we'll call on the God of heaven in one minute to visit this request. I want you to believe you will be surprised to see what happens. Go ahead, praying in the spirit, stretching your hands. Let's receive answers to these prayers. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. We decree and declare miracles even by the Spirit. Are you praying? Declare in the name of Jesus. Lord, turn situations around. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Let there be miracles, O God impossible situations by the spirit of the living god impossible situations by the spirit of god lord let there be healings for families let there be open doors salvation for loved ones deliverances from all kinds of yokes the release of supernatural blessings 
activations of graces in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Are you praying? Decree and declare. Shake it back at Barakoskia. Here at this higher ground conference, we agree as the body of Christ. We agree as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that these requests will never, 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 never have to be written again. A few more seconds. You are praying. It's under a corporate anointing we are declaring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now our time is gone, but if you will allow me, Pastor, would I just invite the angel over this house to just come and stand? He's going to make a, declare over, a declaration over this request, received by faith, and then we'll seal it and wrap up. Please come, sir. Let's honor him as he comes. Hallelujah. I truly believe in the power of prophetic prayer. He will make declarations over this and over you, and so you receive by faith. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Let's just stretch our hands. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Concerning what everything written here, in the name of Jesus Christ, all requests here hereby receive answers. Amen. The word is a double edged sword. Some that have to do with things that should stop, that should never happen again. We decree and declare, an end has come to everything written here as a pain. It is written, every tree that is not planted by my father shall be uprooted. Whatever is in any of these requests that reminds any family or anybody of pain, of disease, misfortune, calamity, anything rejected on this list by individuals written it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they are rejected. Never to happen again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And again, I stretch forth my hand towards this list. Everything that is a request to be granted, we say amen to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, every desire is met in Jesus' name. It is done. It is settled. In the name of Jesus Christ. If under the old covenant, even in his backsliding state, Eli said to Anna, the request you have made, said the God of Israel, grant you the request which you have made. Now I stand with apostle and we stretch our hands over this and we speak by the Spirit that in the name of Jesus Christ, all requests here are hereby granted. Yeah. What follows after this are testimonies. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never make this request again. Because it is settled once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name. You know, I see some of them catching fire. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. In the same vein, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, the power and the mercy that brought Pharaoh down, may you not see them again forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, that everything you have written here, just like the angel over this house has declared, I stand in faith with him and we declare, receive answers to these prayers. We turn every prayer request here to a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, the same hands that wrote the request will be the same hands that will receive the testimonies. In the name of Jesus. And for all of you here tonight, we decree and we declare over your lives. Before you return home, some of you will meet testimonies of mercy waiting for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
and because our time is gone the impartation and the balance of this meeting would be tomorrow whatever sacrifice you have to make please make sure that you are here to receive many of you have seen this in your dreams and your visions tomorrow dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again